Man, before I say hi, hello, what's up, and greet the my kids and maniacs, I must say I am done with the Lakers this year. I am too through with the Lakers this year. How do you blow a 20-point lead to New Orleans? Who has Ingram that you guys got rid of? Just sad. Just absolutely sad, man. Pathetic. No excuse for blowing a 20-point lead against these dudes. And you're trying to make it to the playoffs. So now, of course, the Lakers probably won't even make the playoffs. Feel me? I'm hot, man. I'm so tired of these fools. They wasted my whole basketball season this year, man. It's crazy. But what up, y'all? Hopefully everybody's well. I spoke to Cartoon an hour ago, so he should be coming. Don't know why he's late. Maybe the link's not working. Maybe he's busy. Maybe he forgot. I don't know, but he said he would be here. I also sent a complimentary link to the homie Mumpy, since that's his cousin. I thought he might want to chime in and see what his cousin talking about and add some spice to tonight's live. But, you know, it is what it is, man. Things don't always work out the way we plan them to. Goof show. What up, homeboy? I mean, I've been tired of them too, but not like tonight, dude. A 20-point lead, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. That make no sense, man. Web dude, what up? Yeah, Mumpy's a lot of people's favorites. It'd be nice if he blessed the platform a little more often. Big Devil, what up, homeboy? Kendall Johnson, what up? I didn't send your stuff out Friday, man, but I got you on Monday, man. Marlon Guest, good looking out, brother. Appreciate you, man. Nets lost the lead also. I didn't watch that game, man. That game was of no interest to me. The Lakers is a different story. So, you know. Man. Wish we get rid of LeBron too much drum. You know, I think I said it last last live that I spoke on LeBron. OG oh, Steve, good looking out. LeBron is chasing a scoring title, man. I'm definitely a Dodgers fan. Here go Cartoon. But LeBron's chasing a scoring title. He don't care about winning, man. He takes them long three-pointers when he shouldn't. He's not taking shots according to what the score is on the game or what part of the game it is. He's just trying to score points. Cartoon, what's up, homie? What's up, Cub? Man, I, I'm thinking I'm sitting there staring at the phone thinking I'm on, and I didn't know I had, I had to scroll up about a half an inch and hit the little blue bar. I'm like, oh, okay, here, go right here. Right, right, right. Good looking out, King Real. Hey, um, so what's happening, man? What you been up to? Man, what's happening, homie? I'm just, man, going to work, living. I, I see you be keeping up, keeping up with uh with that March Madness, man. My heart got broke, man, when my when Miami put my Auburn Tigers out. Man, look here, man. I, you got on Auburn hoodie right now right oh yeah man the whole man my, man my wardrobe is flush with it look man i called rockhead when auburn was they was either undefeated or they was had one loss but they was the number one team in the nation right I called rockhead i said man auburn is sorry as hell he, what? Said, how could, he said how could they be sorry look at their record and why are they ranked number one i said rockhead don't fall for it they are not good Right. He argued me up and down. So they won the next game. He's like, what happened? I'm like, man, it's luck, Rocky. They won the next game. He said, you said Auburn ain't no good. I said, man, Rocky, watch them play. They're not playing good. Other teams are just playing real bad. So they won a third game. And Rocky said, man, you crazy. After that, they fell apart. Then my homeboy in the pen, little Petey Wack, he's a big gambler. He asked me, what teams do I think is good? I said, let me tell you what team I think ain't good, first of all. I said, Auburn. He said, man, you crazy. Auburn's number one. I said, listen, that's why I'm telling you, Auburn is not that good, bro. Watch him play. It took him all the way until today to say, man, you was right about Auburn. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, but I, 
I got mixed feelings on that one because hey, I get super duper emotional when it comes to them to the to the Marvin Tigers, man. I feel you. I'm like that with this damn Laker team, man. It's killing me, man. It feels like I'm losing a family member or something when right. they play that bad. But now you know what? See, Auburn is not my team with basketball. They just really my team with football. When it comes to basketball, you know what I'm saying? I'm a Tar Heel fan. Yeah. Yeah, the Tar Heels are balling. Right, yeah. They doing their thing. Yeah, absolutely, man. Man, I got 50 million people keep hitting. Keep Me all too. Ready. Me too. Shoot. You on Kev Mac? You on, yes, I'm on there. Yeah. Tune in, file in, hit the like, subscribe. Whatever they be saying on YouTube, just do all that if you listening. <laughs> That's what's up. Did you see my Sparks interview? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I seen the homie. Yeah. I like that. I like you that. Like yeah. Oh, yeah. Anytime the homie speak, boom, I seen the one with him. And I seen the one he did with uh with uh with uh uh with uh Crazo. Yeah, his little homie. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't even know Crazo had a station of what he calls uh, the Game Bangers Life Coach. Yeah, yeah. That's a cold hookup, ain't it? Yeah, that's a cold title. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It fit, though. It fit. Yeah, yeah. Man, so, yeah, I'm, man, I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to um, doing the um, what we say in the little sit down when I come out there in May. Yeah, I'm going to have to try to make special arrangements to be there when you get out there. When you told me that you're going to hook up with Mump and Sparks, I'm like, damn, man, I got to find a way to get out there, man. Right, right, right. See, but now you know you're right there. All you got to do is push the whip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, Still, man, though, you know man, how I day, uh, The plane tickets, man, man, plane tickets, you know, like my wife, she um, she been pushing hard to get a plane ticket, come out there, you know, her son, you know, you know, my, you know I'm married to uh, Jap 5, mama, and, um, you know, she's been trying to get down to that county jail to go see him, check him out. Man, them goddamn plane tickets, boy. Ooh, wee. Man, they killing us right now. Yeah. John Monday, what up? And no, it's not a happy Sunday, man. The Lakers got their ass whooped. But look, man, um, talk tell me about the Sparks interview. What did you like or didn't like about it? Tell me what you thought about it. Man, you know, when it when it comes to the home, you know, saying he got you know, I'd be like, I'd be like to hear about his prison experience. And so, you know, when he, when he be, you know, and he, you know, especially when he talk about, you know what I'm saying? What we were both a part of, you know, cause he can give, he can give in-depth insight to that. You know what I'm saying? From the ground up, from the ruler to the tutor. So, you know, you know, I'd be, I'd be all ears, you know, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be wanting to hear the whole hookup. You know what I'm saying? And the homie, I'm just glad to homie out. He doing good. You know what I'm saying? I can't wait till Lavelle touchdown, get his crazy butt up out of there, so he can come out here and you know what I'm saying, live his life too. But um, I be yeah, I be like I be liking to catch Spark anytime he speak. For those that don't know, when he mentioned Lavelle, that's Spark's brother. That's right. still incarcerated. Did you run across Sparks in the pen? No, um, me and Sparks were never on the yard together. Me and Lavelle was. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah, every time, yeah, me and Lavelle, we we was in uh we was in Pelican Bay together. Man, what you think about all this celebrity boxing stuff, man? Man, um, I see, I see, you know what I'm saying? If 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 the person is if the celebrity is good enough or if he's more if he's popular enough, it's some money to be made. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If you really want to make some now, because I seen um I seen a few people now, like I seen the boy uh you know what I'm saying? The boy uh C Mac, Crip Mac, him and Blueface was supposed to do some. Then I guess because he got mad at uh Whack 100, he canceled that. Now, me personally, that's for the um, that's for the money. Mm -hmm. Now, me and the boy C Mac, you know what I'm saying? We've been kind of passing words on Instagram. You know, the boy got a foul mouth. And the cold part about it, I like him. You know, he's a throw, he's a throwback crip. Like, you know, I I, I like to do, but at the same token, I want to knock him out. <laughs> and I told him I want to knock him out. I told him I'd come to him. He told me last time, um, well, you know, he had just caught the gun case and let him see how the case fall out. All right, that was months ago. You'd have been back to jail and back out since then. All right, cool. He keep talking about he got these big knuckles and, you know, the alleys. Man, listen. Homie, I, I, man, listen. I will come to that alley if they, if they, if they want to put the guns down and, and you know, as he say, a friendly fade. 
I give him that. I want that. You know what I'm saying? I be I keep telling him. He, he say I'm an old man. You know what I'm saying? I'll be 58 next week. He say I'm an old man. I'm tired. I'm washed up. Okay, well, get his old man. Get his old man a fade then. You know what I'm saying? I'm a dust. And he keeps talking about he walked the yards. He did this. Now, for one, okay, yeah, he been to the county jail. True enough. What prisons he been to? I heard him say something about Wasco. He might have went through the reception center and did a turnaround. I don't know what yards he walked. I don't ever hear him talk about that. I hear him talk about the county jail all the time. But now the same thing. Okay, well, cool, homie. You been to the county jail. You you say you ain't going to never turn down nothing. You know why you keep turning me down? And I told him, you know what I'm saying? On Instagram, I say, homie, both our sets in the 50s. You know what I'm saying? I'm from five trade. You from five five. We both come up under the May Day. I'll be out there. I'll be there. I'll be there on your set day, homie. I told him I'll come to him on his set day and knock him out in front of his home boys. We could pick a neutral site. We could pick a where where wherever he wanted at. I want to fade. He, he keep on talking about other folks too little and too small. Okay, me and him the same size. He my size. He say he he's 6'3, uh, 280. All right, homie. You know, I'm 6'2, 340. We both heavyweights. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Because it ain't gonna be no, I'm gonna beat you up. I'm gonna literally knock this clown out. Because of his mouth, because of his mouth, his disrespectful mouth, I'm going to get a hold to him. He need to quit ducking me. I'm going to be there. I told him I'm going to be there. He oh, he want to call me names and do all this and that. Now, okay, all that's fine and dandy. The names you use and I expect for you to use them. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like, it ain't like we get along anyway. But let's put all that to the side and let's, okay, and let's throw these hands. I'm a real East Sider, original East Sider. Come up fighting. So he say he doing that too. Come on, let's do it then. Stop ducking me. You know, he, the boy keep ducking me, man. I'm coming though. So have you ever thought about he's young enough to be your son? You would box somebody that's that guess young? what? That give him an advantage. He young. He young. Got juice. Got energy. What he say is his program time five. He doing burpees. He done, I don't do nothing but go to work every day. You know what I'm saying? I'm an old man kicking 60 in the behind. You know what I'm saying? Come on, take advantage of this old man. Go and get your win under your belt. You know what I'm saying? If he don't want to do it for free, I got three racks. I got 3,000. On, on Avalon Gangsters, I got three. If he whoop me, I give him that three racks. Damn. Tell him put three racks up. I'm not just going to whoop him. I'm going to knock him clean out. I'm going to put him on his back in front of his homeboys. That's on Avalon. I got three racks. I'm bringing it with me in my pocket. He wanted we can sit it on the table, on the ground, on the floor. However, he want to do it, we can do it. Mm. Hey, uh, so look, so what? What if, what if somebody's able to set up a, a boxing match with the gloves on? Would would that work for you? Yeah, we can do that too. I, yeah, I do that. I, I, yeah, I do that. I just want to put the, I just want to put these paws in his mouth. You know what I'm saying? I want to. You know. I want to get them, what, the little brim boy left one or two of them in the front on him. I just want to come get them other ones. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he, he really be talking funny. The golden fake gold teeth that he putting in his mouth, they really fit in there. Then I get them other two he got left in the front. Hmm. But if somebody can set it up, all that, you know what I'm saying? It, 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 ain't, got, it ain't got to be no gunplay, no, no crazy stuff. Yeah, I respect it all the way around. You know what I'm saying? Celebrity boxing. You know, we can do, we can do that. We can do it. However you want to do it, win, uh, lose, or draw. If he if he so happens to win, which that's not gonna happen, it ain't. But if he so happens to win, homie man, I've been fighting all my life. Come up fighting on that east side. I could take a win just like I could take a loss. I ain't never won them all. Can't nobody win them all. You know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, I, I just want I just want I just want to see where he's coming from. He talking about all these county jail fights and fades and all this and that. He should be ready. Okay, prove it. I ain't finna go to no gym, program time five, program time three. I ain't finna do none of that. I'm, I'm finna go to work every day. When May come, I'm gonna catch this plane. I'm gonna come on out there. I'm gonna hit him up on Instagram again. Cuz, where you at, fool? Let's do it. You know what I'm saying? Where you where you want to meet at? Now, if he want to do it, we can do it. If he gonna punk the game, he gonna punk the game. But now, <coughs> if he punk the game, though, <clears throat> I'm gonna make sure Everybody in that internet world know that he just full of mouth, that he really don't want to get out. He ain't really about that life for real. 
You think somebody could have a tattoo like that across their head and be in the streets of LA and not be about their life? Man, you know what? I see him. I see him all the time. Um, I don't know. I don't know really know where he'd be at, but uh, I, you know, I don't. I don't know, homie. I, I don't. I don't know if they taking him as a joke or they just let him pass. I don't know. I don't really know where he hang at. But now nine times out of ten, he's spending most of the time in his hood. Okay, yeah, you can sport that tattoo in your hood, or when he is out and about, he's in a car. And like a lot of times you will see um like when he go to um churches, I mean not churches, but Popeye's chicken, he go to chicken places that's in his friend, like he'll go in Harlem hood, he'll go in hoods that he get along with. You know what I'm saying? He ain't just out and about doing this and that, doing that. But now you know, like I say, he be out and about feeding the homeless though. You know what I'm saying? If yeah, somebody really, really, if dudes really, really, really want to catch him, I believe they really could. Cause now you know, like I say, he out feeding the homeless. They can zero in on him, but now you know, hey, what because some don't happen today, don't mean it won't happen tomorrow. You know what I'm right. saying? The boy, the you know, the boy, you know, the boy days probably numbered or not. I ain't gonna wish that on him. Bump that. I ain't gonna wish it on him. But now you know, hey, it is what it is. You know, I mean, you know, he hey, he don't like his enemies, so that's just that. Hey, hey, um, somebody keep asking, have you seen his fight video? Uh, I seen, I didn't see, I didn't, they took it off the air when, when he got, when he got DP'd, I didn't really see that. And I seen him getting off the ground. Um, I seen one little video of him where he was in the ring with some gloves on with a little bitty dude swinging and swinging and, um, and fell all on the ground with his big goofy uncoordinated self, man, I'm gonna mop this boy. But anyway, um, I seen one where he fell on the ground. I seen one, uh, years ago where. He got out with one of his homeboys in the backyard about something, you know, average, average little stuff. The boy, ain't, the boy ain't in my league, period. Boy ain't in my league, period. You know what I'm saying? Um, but from what I see, you know what I'm saying? He ain't finna do nothing but the average, you know, average street fight, get out there and just go to swinging. So, you know, which cool enough. That's all he know. That's all he know. I'm going to drink him like a Pepsi and walk him like a dog, though. <laughs> Somebody said you growing your hair out, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, it been growing for a minute, man. You, you know, I had that hat on last time, had it covered up, but um, man, it's hot as a big dog out here in the dirty south right now. So I just got it hanging. I just got it hanging on out. You know what I'm hey. saying? If I, if I get that boy in that alley, I tie it down so he can't grab it. He gonna want to grab it. He gonna want to grab hold on to something to keep him hitting that dirt. OG Bam from Front Hood said the same thing. Said you growing your hair out. Okay, tell Cub what's up. Tell Cub what's up. Does Cartoon remember when Eleven Deuce Broadway started hanging on the other side of South Park with the Broadways? Um, you okay? Um, they used to come down there a lot. They used to kick it with us too. Um, this was back in the '90s before I caught my last case. But um, uh, I guess they might have. You know, they might have been hanging with the Broadways in the park when I was out. They would be in the park. You know what I'm saying? But like I say, they kicked it with the five. They kicked it with us. You know what I'm saying? When the when the when uh, the homies first started that uh A's and Ways, mm -hmm. they would come, yeah, they would come down and kick it. They would come down and kick it. But um, since I've been out this time, I don't really see them down there that much. You know what I'm saying? Just the five deuces. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I ain't seen my boy, I ain't seen my boy cartoon for five dudes. I mean from uh, eleven dudes Broadway in years. <laughs> hey, um, this guy says, no disrespect to the homie from Avalon, but this ain't that type of platform. And I, I explain that to Cartoon, but Cartoon has not been disrespectful as far as he ain't dissed his hood. He ain't, you know, Cartoon is old enough to handle himself. And, oh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, okay, like like whoever that was, like you say, you know, I'm not going, no, I'm not, I'm not finna disrespect the man neighborhood. I'm not finna, to, you know what I'm saying, call him names, call him out his names. But like I say, you know, now me and him have went back and forth on Instagram with each other, you know what I'm saying, saying some, you know, some some disrespectful stuff. But that's me and him going at each other. But as far as, like you say, on an open platform like this, no, I'm not finna disrespect his neighborhood. I'm not finna, I'm not finna just call him names. Now, you see, I haven't done that. But now I am letting him know that I'm going to be in town in May. You know what I'm saying? And I want to get out because he told me, you know, he told me to get out. So I'm letting him know when I come. I, you know what I'm saying? Let's do it. Open invitation, homie. Whoever, yeah. whoever that, 
whoever that was who wanted to know, they can show up and get a front row seat. So some some of the comment section leaning one way, some leaning the other way. Uh, they say let the youngsters handle that. Let, leave that to the youngsters. But then there's other people saying you you got a right to respond, and older dudes have a right to speak also. Yeah, yeah. Age ain't you know, homie. Age ain't really nothing but a number. You know what I'm saying? Whether old or young, you know what I'm saying. Um, young the youngsters they out there in the streets right now. They doing whatever they do. But like I say, this right here is with me and him. Verse. You know, based on the words that me and him have said back and forth to each other. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, it, to go even in depth with it, I had um, I had got on Instagram. I got on and I and I hit him up, and I told him I say, homie, you know what? I reach. I, I, and, I, and I told him I said I respect you. I like I like your cripping, homie. I say you a throwback crip. I say you ain't like these these new wave skinny jeans backpack crips. I say I like your get down. I say, you know, even though I, you know, our sets don't like each other, I said, I respect you though. I like you. Get out. And his his response to me was, you know, F you, old Custer. I don't give a dang about you. This, 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 and this, and this. I'm like, whoa. I'm like, dang, homie, I was just reaching out to give you a compliment, let you know I respect your cripping. But if this how you feel, okay, I can get on there with you, homie. When I when you know, when I when I get a chance to see you, I just put these paws in your jaws. Hey, you know what's funny? I was watching somebody live on uh, Instagram. I forgot who it was, but it was like it was a rapper, like a celebrity, and he was saying how C Mac done done uh, made up the name Custer. And I'm like, boy, you don't know nothing about this crip. And Custer is right. an old ass word. Oh, for real, yeah. yeah. But but like you said, he's kind of like a throwback crip, so he brings back that C talk. Right, right, and, right. And, you know, compared to other guys his age nowadays, they don't wear all the blue and be cripped down like he does. So. Exactly. You know, and you know, you and you know me, so you know, you already know I'm going to like that. Yeah. And I liked it that about the cat. I respected that. I'm like, okay, the homie, you know, I seen a video of him the other day where he was in the, um, <clears throat> he was in the shoe store getting some shoes and um, he held up different pairs and he, when he got to a little burgundy pair, a little red pair, he was like, uh, he was like, okay, these cool for you. He said, but, uh, you know, I'm a crip. I don't wear that. And, you know, it put a smile on my face. You know, I'm like, okay. You know, I, you know, I like, you know, he might be a little mentally touched or whatever. You know what I'm saying? But I like his get out. And, I, you know, I see people a lot of times say, well, he's slow. Or, you know, mentally he's this and that. But now, you know what, though? He's a lot smarter than what a lot of people give him credit for. He's not as, he is not as slow as what a lot of people think. So you know, don't you know, don't put him on him like that. He got pretty, he got pretty good sense, you know. He he can function. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes he's seen. I mean, he can't come out and said himself that he's you know got issues and all right, that. right. But, Me, no but you're issues. right. A lot of times he seemed really smart. Like yeah, he has good vision ahead of him as far as doing right by the people. So you right. right. He got. You know what? What that's that was another thing I respected about him because he got a good heart, and and he genuine. He's so his mind is so simple that he's not the type. He's not finna get on the camera and and put a three on the ten to make himself seem more than what he is. He's not gonna get on there and tell a bunch of lies. He's just speaking what's in his heart, and I can respect that. You know what I'm saying? He ain't lying about nothing. He ain't he ain't making it um. More than what it is and all that, he just saying, you know, what it is. And you know, that's another thing I like about the cat. You know what I'm saying? I like that about the cat. He just he just real, real genuine. I'll still beat him up, but that's what I like about him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they going up in the comment section now about his uh physical being. Somebody said, Did you run with Jamel Barnes back in the day? Oh uh, no 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 no! That's 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 a uh, that's a uh, that's a G homie from eight eight from Avalon Guards. He was before my time. Mm -hmm. Man, so so what else you been up to, or what other plans you got, man? When you come to LA, man, um, shoot, uh, I'm like I told you before, I'm gonna get with uh get with my with my cousin Mump. I want to go to that casino in Inglewood. I ain't, you know I like to gamble. They got they got little casinos and stuff out here in Alabama, but. They um they ain't number like little slot machines. Mm -hmm. 
So I've been spending a lot of time going back and forth from Alabama to Texas. In fact, I've been spending more time in Texas with my kids than I have really, really in Alabama. You know what I'm saying? I'm dang there to relocated to Texas because I'm out there so much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But and um, you, and you know what's funny? When, when uh, I talked to you earlier, you had mentioned like how crazy it would be to have you Mump and Sparks on a video, right? Right. Somebody just said, somebody from Texas just said, we need that cartoon Mumpy interview. <laughs> Tell her, hey, let them know, homie, that's, it's on the way. You know, I told Mump, when I touch down, we got to hit you up, and um, we going we gonna to hook that up. We going to hook it up. Yeah, well, now that I know ahead of time, I got time to plan for it, so. Right, yeah, yeah, that's not last cool. minute, so I shouldn't have no excuse. I had, um... I had um been talking to my homeboy Blue, and he had been telling me about like some uh, like some good things that's going on in LA, um, especially like with the street, with like the street scenes, like round tables, peace talks, and stuff like that. Um, the homies they they kind of um putting their thing with the East Coasters to the side, and cause they had asked me, you know, well, what you feel? I'm like, cool, yeah, homie, I ain't got no problem with that. You know what I'm saying? That thing ain't been going on long enough. You know, it ain't really nothing. It ain't like we really do a lot to each other. Shoot, cause peace, because if we don't, we ain't going to have nothing, and the mess is going to have 100% of the east side, you know? Yeah, I've been trying to tell people that a lot lately. I, in fact, one dude, a lifer in prison that got at me recently and was asking me, what's my objective? Why Why do I engage in, in doing these gang interviews? And I told him, this is history, because we're not going to be in L.A. long. Right. This shit, this shit is damn near a done deal. And, right. you know, it's crazy because when you locked up and, and you was locked up for a, a nice stretch, you don't realize how much the neighborhood is flipping over while you're gone. And you come back and you like, damn, where all the niggas go, man? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, man, it's like, okay, the homie, like in my set, the homies still come out and hang out, but they coming from all different areas different just to areas. meet right here. Yeah. And right. then at the end, yeah, at the end of the night, <coughs> or whatever, <coughs> homies jumping in their cars, they got to go back to Lancaster, Palmdale, San Bernardino, uh, Rialto. Uh, wherever they going, you know what yeah. I'm saying? <coughs> ain't nobody got um, ain't nobody got like no houses no more. And I was telling one of the homies, I'm like, dang, I would love to rent an apartment or like buy a house in the neighborhood, you know what I'm saying? But now uh, it's like. It, it is what it is, homie. It's just like it's it's, it's fade no. Yeah. Hey, I don't know about in your neighborhood, but in our neighborhood back in the day when I was coming up, we had a saying like, nigga, if you ain't in the hood, nigga, you can't come around here just pop up trying yeah. to run around. But now, like you said, everybody coming from outside the hood. Now right. niggas got to make phone calls and be like, hey, you going to be in the hood? What time you going to be in the hood? And you meet up in the hood, so times have changed drastically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was um, I was just about two days ago talked to uh, my homeboy Bull, and but one of the things I was asking him about, I'm like, cuz you know, um, like you know, since I've been out to pen, I you know, what I'm saying I come back, I come back to L.A. Every, you know, every set day, I come back all the set days. Well, the months I can, I'm gonna come back five trade day all the time, but I try to make 40, 11, 6, and um. And um, which poke? Okay, cuz I'm tell, tell cuz I'll be back set day. Fire yeah, trade. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, but um, but now what tripped me out though, like for instance, like me, and it's it's a few more little homies, cuz it costs me thousands of dollars to leave, you know what I'm saying, to leave out here and come back to LA, you know what I'm saying, for the set mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. But now I'm telling the homie, I'm like, well, what about the homies who live right here in Southern California and don't show up? Now, you know, your homie, you remember back in the day, cuz you wasn't finna do, you know, if you went too long, if you went two, three days without showing up in the hood, when you did show up, you were finna get socked out. You know, where you being, cuz, you know what I'm saying? We ain't been seeing you fool. Us. There you go. At least in my hood, that's how it was. But now here it is, set day pop up, homies that live that live right here in Southern California still don't show up. What's the excuse, cuz? I mean, you know, dang, we ain't seen you all year. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Hey, uh, you know Q Bone from Broadway? Yeah, know him well, cuz of oh, course. Shit. Absolutely. From, from from the dirt on up. Now that would be a cold interview with you two. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, I um let me see. I talked to Cuz. Let me see about uh it might have been a month or two ago. You know, I got his phone number. I him and the dude that used to, matter of fact, the cold part about it, him and my landlord, where I used to live out here, they real cool. I you know, cause you know, he spent a lot of time out here too. You know, we know a lot of people out here. And um we was kicking it like that. I was talking. I was talking to him about some. Oh, matter of fact, I was trying to. Let, I wanted him to let me know when. Um, I think that was last year when Snoop Dogg had his birthday party. Yes. Yeah, you called me and said you wish you would have known about it. Right, right. And I was letting them know. I was like, I was, I was calling him about a couple of months ago, and I was letting them know. Cause next time that pop off, let me know. Cause I wanted you know what I'm saying. Hey, front and center got to come mm -hmm. up in there. Mm -hmm. Damn, I forgot. Oh, as cartoon, what's the best squabble you have seen in the prison system? Um, in 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 Alabama or either California? One, either one. Just tell us about the best one you seen. Oh shoot, cuz so okay. I, it okay as far as California go. When I first started coming into the system, it wasn't a whole lot of fighting. You know what I'm saying? If you if you you know you was gonna blast them and try not to get shot. Simple as that. You know that fighting stuff. That was out the window. Mm -hmm. um, in the later years, they start fighting. They start fighting. As far as the best get out, cuz man, you be catching me off guard with these. Um, <laughs> uh, believe it or not, cuz us in Pelican Bay, it was a fight in the cell, and it was with uh, let me see, cuz name uh, one of your homeboys. I, it was a youngster from your set. I think his name was Knuckles. I think a, a Knuckles from Six O and um and Big and Big Mad from Do Rock. They had put them in the cell together, and it was like, no, nah, uh, -uh that was oil and water. Like, no, nah, cause we ain't finna live together. And they got and and I come to the cell to talk to them. They didn't want to hear nothing. I was talking about they would they they start getting them up, cause they was chunking them. I'm talking about cause they was throwing haymakers. They was throwing haymakers, homie. They was down, and they fought like they fought every day for like four days straight. To the administration finally went on and moved them. But other than that, cuz they fought two, three times every day for about four days straight. All right, what up, Stan? What's going on? Hey, the Goob Show wants to know what yard and what year was you in Pelican Bay? Okay, I went, I left, I got, I got um, I caught a shoe term in Corcoran in what was that, 90 or 91, and I went to Pelican Bay shoe. And um, I think I was in I was in C section in the shoe. I got out the shoe in '92, and um, I was on um, I think that was B yard, the one where yeah, that's B yard where it's all gated off. I stayed on I stayed on B yard for a hot second, and um, we got we got we got into it with the Mexican, the homie Crusher from Five Dudes Broadway came up there. You know he was up there for killing a Mexican, and um, when he hit the yard. The Mexicans tried to take off on him. And so when they did that, we took off on them too. Me and um uh because and, and the cold part about it, me and my little partner, Four Finger Dave from Bounty Hunter, we kicked it off. Hmm. But um, okay, they locked us down, and uh we stayed locked down for some months, cuz and they rode the van up on the yard and they shot us all to Lancaster. That's when we opened up Lancaster. We opened up Lancaster in 93. And um, that that went on. That was cool for about four five months. Then we kicked it off. We kicked we we kicked it off. Matter of fact, I kicked it off because um they tried to stab the homie um worm from swamp from Compton swamps. I'm like no, cuz no 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 no. So we took off again. Went lockdown. I went back to Corcoran. I went back to Corcoran shoe. From Corcoran shoe, they shot me back to Pelican Bay shoe. I got out on Pelican Bay Main Line again in 95, but I was on the A yard. I was on A facility at this time. That's when me and Lavelle was there, and I ended up paroling in 96. Have you experienced more racism in California or Alabama? California, hands down. California, homie, hands down. The prison system in Alabama, 
is nowhere near because it's it's the majority black. You know what I'm saying? Is uh, Alabama is a black state. Um, I mean, excuse me, is a is a the prison system is black, and they they ain't got no Mexicans. It ain't number black and white, and they dominate the white boys hands down. You got a handful of Mexicans. They've been coming in slowly but surely, but um. In Cali- California, all the way, all the way around the table, homie. All the way around the table. Uh, much love from California and the Bay Area. Thanks for the knowledge and the education and history. Oh, yeah. We well, yeah, I had a homie out here and uh, locked up in Alabama with me. Uh, the homie Hindu for, out of Oakland. He was kicking it with us for a minute. Was five Trey close with the show lines in the 80s? Um, we didn't have no problems with them. They were too far away. <laughs> they were cuz they was way at the beach. Homie, you know, we way on that deep east side. Um, we didn't have a we didn't we've never had a problem with the show lines. Uh we was always cool. It was always cool with them. You know, when we did pop up at the beach, we would see them and like, you know what I'm saying, what's up, cuz? What's up, homie? You know what I'm saying? They show line, Avalon, you know, we kicked it for a minute, you know what I'm saying? They went their way, we went ours. But as far as kicking it, kicking it, there was too much, it was too much uh space between us. Mm-hmm. You had told me you ran across Monster Cody once, right? Oh yeah, me and my, me and Monster nice. was in Y together. Yeah, right. and then we was in the we was in the pen together you know. too. I I told you what uh, you know the situation with us in prison. So yeah, you know. yeah. As cartoon, did you know Fish from Forty Avalon that passed last year? Oh yeah, that was the homie. Yeah, 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 yeah. We was kicking. Um, I was I was out there right before he passed, and um, being the homie was kicking it. You know what I'm saying? You know he uh you know his sons his sons from Avalon too and um one of his sons had a uh, matter of fact it was at trade day last year um one of his sons that had a, a dispute with uh one of the homies from Five One Trouble and they had uh, we had to get that squash and uh, I, that's the last time I seen fish. Cartoon already answered that question. He didn't do time with Sparks. He did time with his brother. Uh, Goob said he was he was there the same time you was, but you were on B yard while he was on A yard. Oh, okay, yeah, that B yard, homie. That that B yard wasn't nothing nice. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> they had like one and two blocks sectioned off from three and four. Section, you know, they had them they had them gates between it. You could only come to the gate and talk. If you know somebody was way down there in, uh, in eight block, cause you couldn't even really talk to them, cause the gate was right there. Hey man, are you saying are you saying the A yard was soft? <laughs> nah, no, it wasn't. I ain't gonna say it was soft. I'm just gonna say <clears throat> at that time in '92, it was it wasn't like it wasn't like that B yard because that B yard and in '92, Pelican Bay B yard probably was the, the most dangerous spot in the California prison system. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't even it because it wasn't even no grass. They had the whole thing cemented off. It wasn't even no, you wasn't finna bury nothing. Period. You had your other shoe. If you couldn't bring it out in your prison suitcase, you know what that was. You <laughs> wasn't finna too much get it to the yard. Mm-hmm. How's the rent in Alabama? <coughs> shoot, cuz it's cheap, cuz I got a four bedroom house. I don't pay but $650 a month. God damn. <coughs> Shit. It'd be nice too, homie. It's nice. Mm-mm-mm. Hey, uh, they said big cartoon always keeping it one hundred. Uh, it's a lot of static. Oh, you didn't hear me. Your your connection might be messing up. I could hear you, but yeah, some some going wrong. It sound like go, a robot. Go out and come back in. Exit I, and and click the link again. How do I? Oh, okay. Just leave it completely. Yeah, just go all the way out. All right. Bully Vaughn, yeah, much love to Cartoon Kev. You need to move out here. Where you at, man? You in Alabama too? Yeah, they say I need to yeah, move the, out here. Yeah, the sound came back, huh? Houston rents the same. My sister said her rent just went up dramatically, so she's looking to move now. Man, listen, I don't it's know. um, every you know everybody could like it's a trip. You know what I'm saying? The way uh. Back, uh, I was looking at something on TV and it, and it showed like how back in the day, cause because of the slavery and oppression, everybody moved from the south, out west, and uh, up north. 
in Midwest. Now, in this day and age, cuz, it's a black exodus from all those areas. Everybody's coming back to the South. All the blacks coming from, from all these other states, homie. Everybody's moving back to the South. And uh, because, like I said, you know, the rent is way cheaper. Um, it, it's just it's just real different because the police seem different, homie. Police don't even fool with you. They don't fool with you, period. I'm talking about you dang there where I'm at, cuz you got to you got to rushly almost throw a rock at their car just to get them to fool with you. And hey, your crimey was Mexican? Yeah, my crummy was uh the homie no good from 40 Avalon. Oh, oh, but he was a crip. He was a Mexican crip. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, his ethnicity was Mexican, but that Mexican was black through and through, homie. You know, <laughs> and you know, he come up from day one with us, cuz you know, he'd been in the hood since he was like three, four years old, you know. He ain't know he, know he ain't know nothing about what they was talking about, homie. Did he walk the main line when he went got locked up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cuz been cuz been to the pen in Cali two, three times. And he been, you know what I'm saying? He did the time out here. And he was in the pen in Cali two, three times, cuz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that look, hey, I ain't gonna even lie. Wasn't nothing to play with, homie. You know, I as far as putting in work for the set, I did that. But now I can honestly say, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna pass the mantle to somebody, that Mexican right there, cuz I could pass it to him because he did his thing. Hmm. He was a rider. I matter of fact, I just talked to him about about 10 minutes, cuz before I came on here, he hit me up. I'm like, you know, they, they deported the homie to Mexico, cuz won't even let him back, man. man. I'm hurt. I'm hurt about that. I keep hearing that story. I guess that's how they got rid of the Mexican Crip and Bloods, man. Right. That's the what that the South Siders didn't convert to South Side. But look, the way LA is now, when I be you know, like, I'll be on YouTube and I'll be looking at a lot of these videos, like like when dude like the little gang rappers, um, they be doing all the sets got Mexicans from them now. And I heard in the prison system, you no, know, back when I was coming, if a Mexican came into the system and he was from a black gang, pretty much that was a ride. That was a ride off the bat. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. But from what I hear now. Is that they not tripping like that no more because so many Mexicans are from black gangs. You know, the cultures have, you know what I'm saying, have mixed in so much together that the mentality is a little bit different. Cause even, I mean, but like, okay, because like even back in the day, you are you are, you know, my hood is shared with the East Side Playboys. It'd been like that yeah. for, for years. Right. And I remember at one time back in the day, the original, the West Side uh Playboys came over there to the hood yeah. to kick it with the East Side Playboys. Yeah, and when they seen a bunch of the homies, a bunch of blacks, they you know they want to trip. They be like, man, what is this? And mm -hmm. we want to start some mess. But the East Side Playboys let them know, hey, no, no, -uh. don't bring that over here. You know what I'm saying? We we live with these cats. We grow up with them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This was they hood before it was ours. You know they they everywhere. Y'all gonna come over here and start a race war? Then y'all gonna run back to East LA or whatever part of LA y'all at and leave it over here for us? You know. But the way it is, the way the way LA is now, though, going to, especially going into the prison system, they ain't really tripping. Are there Avalons in Alabama? Yeah. Oh yeah. I ain't gonna even lie. That's one of the first things I did. Me and No Good when we got locked up out here. You know we had to promote the A gang. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I respect Big Cartoon because he don't and didn't put up with the N word misuse. An example all black men should follow. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. You know, that was one of the things, cuz, especially coming into the prison system in Cali back in the day, cuz, you had to get the, get rid of that N-word. You know what I'm saying? I don't see no use for it. I it just no, nah, um, it's far like e even cussing, you know. That was that was that was like the gateway for me to stop cussing, you know what I'm saying? Cause, you know, get rid of the N-word. Then the next thing on the on the agenda was the B word. And you know, I used to ask homie, like, oh, you know why we can't use the B word. And what it was back then, cuz it was like nine times out of ten. If you you if you you know you use the B word, homie, you directed it toward a black woman. Mm. And I thought about him like you're right. You know what I'm saying? Cause you know the, the black the sisters, homie, man, they so strong, man. A black woman so strong, cause that was our backbone. Cause if it wasn't for black women, our race wouldn't even, our race wouldn't be here no more. Cause they really, throughout history, from the beginning of time, have really, you know, supported us and did that thing. So for us to turn around and call them B-I-T-C-H's cause it's wrong. So once I stopped that, I, that's when I went on and said, bump it. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to just stop cussing, period. I don't need it. You know, I get my, I'm intelligent enough and I'm articulate enough to get my point across 
without all the extras, you know? Mm. And we got a baller off in the comment section. She talking about, you don't want to know how much I pay for my three bedroom and two bedroom condominium near the bay. God Ooh. damn, why don't you invite us over there? Let's throw a party. Man, that woman probably paying uh, 26, 2700 a month for that. Eight, right? Yeah. Yeah, probably 3000 shit. Right, right. The bay ain't is no higher in LA. Yeah, ain't no way in the world, homie. I'm not, oh, no, uh-uh. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. Not going to do it. Can't do it. Hey, and shout out to the dudes from Avalon that, that said thanks for having Cartoon come on. Man, I've been telling you Avalon's for years, man. Y'all welcome on this platform like everybody else, man. You have to take the initiative or one of your homeboys have to take the initiative to step forward and come on here and, and lay it out or just hang out however you want to do it. But I've never rejected Avalon's, bro. Right, 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 right. You know, I, you know, and something I want to ask you. You must have lived on the east side at one time. My, my father did, and my brother. Now I only I lived on the east side, but only when I was kicked out of my mama's house for a few months. I stayed right. over there one summer. Matter of fact, I stayed over there two summers. But I never I never lived over there more than a couple of months. My brother lived over there for some years as did my father, my cousins, my, my auntie. They lived over there. Oh, what geez. happened was when my grandmother's uncle came from Texas to L.A., he got into real estate. He was uh, he was back, with, what do you call that, with the alcohol shit? In Prohibition. Miami? Prohibition. So, so he was a hustler, and he came to L.A. He was hustling. He's shooting dice, the pool tables. The selling alcohol, all this old shit he was doing. He got into real estate and he bought a duplex on 33rd and Wadsworth. Okay. So when he got older, my grandmother, kids, which is my father and my auntie, they moved to LA. And when they became old enough, he gave my auntie that duplex. And right. So when my father got kicked out of my mama house, he moved to the east side with my auntie and take the other side of the duplex. Okay. So yeah. yeah, the reason the reason I asked that because I'm like I'm like man, Kev Mac know a lot about that East Side, man. You know a lot about that East Side. Yeah, man, I used to love to go over there and visit my father on the weekends, man. Unfortunately, he was a player, and right? He didn't like me as much as he liked my brother, so I didn't get to spend as much time with him as a kid as I would like. But when I got older, that shit flipped. He right. was on my coattail, always wanted to be with me and want me to come see him and. When he moved out of state, come fly to be with him. Then he actually ended up moving in with me until I kicked him out um, in my mama's house after she passed. But yeah. yeah, it's funny how life is. That's why you can't do your kids wrong. You never know That's, when you. Hey, 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 for real. Well, yeah. I remember when uh, when uh, when moms kicked me out, tried to send me to stay with pops. It didn't last but a summer. We ended up trying to kill each other, man. I wasn't finna, man. That fool was yeah. tripping. I wasn't finna go. For what he was talking about, then he stayed right there in Inglewood too. Back in the, back in the seventies, I'm like, no, homie, this ain't no, uh, uh. You going to school? No, I'm not. You going to school? No, man, I'm not going to nail school. Nothing over here. Might send me back to the east side. Shoot, hey, man. When I went to the east side, I stayed that summer. They told me I couldn't just be up in the house, so I got to do something, find a job, or go to school. They sent me to Dorsey. And right. I did not like that shit because I got to catch the bus with all them 30 pie rules over there. And, you know, the, the 20 outlaws was coming through there or 30 outlaws, whatever they were. Then yeah. you got the 40 pie rules on the other side of Central. That shit was like hell for me. And I then I'm at Dorsey, so I got to worry about, about the, the jungles unless right. I'm lucky enough to have some 30s or some gears to hang out with a nigga on West Boulevard. But... Man, I did not like that shit. When my mother told me I was going to Crenshaw, that next year I was so fucking happy. I couldn't wait to get the hell off the east side, man. <laughs> hey, man. I ain't never told you about that. I had one ex I had one experience up at Crenshaw. Um, I had got out of jail in 1982. I'd got out. And um my homegirl Trey girl, my homegirl Tagalone, they they was going to um to Crenshaw and they like big homie cuz we need for you to come up here and um man they, man they tripping on us 
they doing this, they doing that, cuz come up here. So you know me, you know, with the air with, with, with my arrogance, I'll be up there tomorrow. I try, I try my good happy behind right on up there to Crenshaw, right when school was letting out. And I seen them. I'm like, what's up, cuz? Come on, we let's go on back to the set. <clears throat> um must must have bent the wrong corner down the wrong hallway. And um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> we were hey, all three of us was in the wind from that point on. <laughs> man. West Mont checking in. Yeah, man. Somebody asked, what was your favorite interview on Kel Mac videos? Uh um uh, uh, the boy Hawk from um from 11 Trey Block. Man, let me put this out there, man. And I don't give a damn who get mad or what anybody got to say. But Hawk gave an interview that was so real as far as all the different incidents and the names right, and right. The years that all these other interviews that come after him only match up to what Hawk already told us years ago. Right. So about six weeks ago, I decided, all right, I'm going to call Hawk. I want to sit down with Hawk in a clear environment, good sound, and get another interview with Hawk, right? Man, so I was I was lucky enough, the homeboy little monster from 60s slid me his phone number, and I called Hawk. I talked to Hawk extensively. And man, them dudes got Hawk so scared to do another interview. They got Hawk scared to write his personal story about his life. What? He got Hawk scared to mention names and gangs in his book. Hold up, hold up, man. Wait a minute. Got him cuz if it wasn't for him, half of them wouldn't even be there they sell. Man, man. And then, like, they lying to Hawk and they lying to others about, you got a million dollar story. I could get you three million for your story. So, like, I told Hawk and I told some of the others whose name I'm not going to mention right now. Well, go get your three million, my brother. Right. Do you need a bodyguard? You need a driver? You need a lawyer? Yeah. What do you need, nigga? I'll, I'll get you what you need so you could go get that three million dollars or tell them niggas to quit lying to you and hating on me. Right, right, right. You're not finna get three million dollars unless you get lucky as hell because, first of all, you're in your 60s. You're not gonna live that much longer. And you had probably... Let's say Monster Cody put his book out in 93, so let's say 7 plus 20. You had at least 29 years to get your 3 million for your story. Right. Nigga, you not finna get it, man. Don't let them dudes trick you. They just don't want you to put that information out because it's going to contradict the stories that they've been telling people and the story they may put out someday. Right, right. Man. I don't, I, you know what? I don't... I wonder why they doing that, cuz. I remember... um. I'm trying to remember where was we at. Me and Hawk was um, we slept right next to each other. But for, I, I ain't gonna even lie, cause for the I cannot remember what prison we were in. But um, you know back then, man, man, the homie had braids. I'm talking about cuz had the long crip blades. I mean, uh, the long crip braids. I'm talking about was on swole, cuz yeah, Hawk was yeah. on swole. Ain't no question. Yeah. You know what that was, the drugs, man, us us brothers lose all our muscles, right. lose yeah. our drive to work out, our diet's not the same, we're not eating, we're not just not eating right, we're not even eating because we, we want to get high before that's, anything. Yeah, that's real, that's real. But I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed in Hawk, but I'm so proud of Hawk because he told me he, he's sober, he ain't doing nothing he shouldn't be doing, he's taking care of his kids and his kids' mother that don't live with him, mind you. They still live in the hood. Right, so I'm right. Proud, I'm proud the brother stepped up and taken care of his business. And that's one thing I hate about us. I, I'm, I'm talking about you, myself. Uh, and not necessarily Mumpy and them. They had life sentences, so they, they don't fall under this category. But we took so long to want to get a job or a career and take care of our family and be right by our sons and daughters. And that's part of the reason why we behind is black folks from the inner city because the white people basically not only inherited a lot of shit, but they had a head start because they already had a vision to go to college or, or take up their mother or father's career or profession and follow behind them. So 
that's why a lot of times we see a lot of them doing a lot better than us. It's not really our fault. We just didn't know no better. And like you said in your interview, all you wanted to do was gang bang. You didn't want yeah, to get man. no money. You didn't want the fancy things. You wanted to gang bang. And unfortunately, that's what kept us in the dark for so long. Right, right. But that's real. And you know, like I said, I ain't, it, it ain't our fault, but at the same time, it kind of is our fault because that's the life we chose. And we right. just got to deal with it. I remember um a conversation I had years and years ago with uh with my mother, and you know, she cried real tears, and um I and she wrote me a letter in prison, and you you know, you can see on the on the paper that um where the tears had fell. And um, one thing she had said in her in her letter to me, cuz was uh, you know, um, it took her years to try to, you know, accept the fact that now this is what she felt. But she but she was right in feeling that way, cuz cause she was saying that, you know, it took her years to accept the fact that um I loved Avalon more than I loved her and my sisters. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't, you know, and I was like, well, no, no, you know what I'm saying? But as you know, as time went on. I thought about it and she was right because I mean, every time I would get out of jail, you know, she would want to try to have me at the house, throw a party and, you know, I might be there 30 minutes. But the only thing on my mind, homie, was getting back to South Park, getting back to the homies, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and, and you know, sad to say, that's what it always was. And, you know, my mama, you know, she went to her grave feeling that I put Avalon before her. Yeah. It's one of them things, though, you know. Well, you know, th this don't equate to a mother's love and how a mother feels about her son, but a nigga's baby mama, and, and, and I know you don't like the N word, but dudes, baby mamas, and and us gang members' wives, the ones that are fortunate enough to become married, uh, a lot of times feel the same way. But they'll put you in a situation where they encouraging you to become a rat. And they testing your love because they saying you want to be with your kids or you want to be with your homeboys. Yeah, they yeah, when you yeah, man, look, I done went through that so many times, homie, catching these cases. And the first thing, man, the females want to holler, well, tell on them, do this and that. Man, get off my phone, man. You ain't talking about nothing. Oh, you, you, this, yeah, 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 yeah. So you know, but you know, I kind of got around that somewhat because I like I say, I had a few of them say that. But my mentality was coming up, if a girl wasn't from the east side, I wasn't finna fool with her. <laughs> and if she wasn't banging, I wasn't finna fool with her. And so, you know, the ones that I that I went with that didn't understand that, you know, they would I would always tell them, you know, a girl would ask me, you know, you got a lady? I'm like, yeah, I got a lady. Or well, why are you talking to me? I said, because my lady don't mind me talking to you. You know, my lady named Avalon. <laughs> and, you know, I would tell girls off the rip, you know, look, don't start that crazy mess about, why I'm with the homies and this and that, because I'm telling you right now from the word go, from the beginning, Avalon come first, then you. If you can't accept it, you need to get on now because you're not finna never pull me from the set. You're not going to never pull me from the homies. But now, oh, I can I can accept it. I'm cool with it, da-da-da. But as time goes on, now it's you always with your homies. You ain't never want to spend no time with me. I'm like, all right, it's time for you to go. Your, your expiration date that popped up, you know, you know what I'm saying? Next. But now they um they I mean they do that. You know, you can't get around it, homie. You can't get around it. It like um on this case I caught out here in Alabama when I came out here. You know, uh one of the dudes I caught the case with turned state on me. Hmm. And um and this girl pushed him into that. Don't leave me out here by myself. We need you, and you know. They, they they hollering, we finna give y'all life without life, and she in his ear with that, oh, just telling them you don't eat cool with them anyway, and why, 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 why? And, I, you know, we went on and fell weak. So, I mean, you know it ain't no thing, no. It happens. Yeah, it happens. It happens. I, I, I've seen it happen to a lot of dudes that had cool reputations up until that point. Uh, old girl want to know why I call them baby mamas? Well, you notice I said baby mamas or those that was fortunate enough to have wives. Oh. So let me explain that. It's real simple. It's, it's very obvious because she's the mother of our babies. Right. She's the baby mama. 
And I'm really when I when I hit cartoon with that, I'm really talking about back in the day, not present moment, because I was talking about when we go to prison, when we in a situation where we got a case. And I obviously haven't had a case in 21 years. So uh that that's what that is. It's man, no what that what that feel like? Uh, huh? What do man, what do being out of prison for 21 it years feels like great, feel man. like? It feels great. You know what I had a homie, my homie Milk. Milk's an OG from 60s. Milk told me, he said, Man, look. He said, one thing's for sure, man. Any homie getting out of prison that want to know how to stay out, they, right. need to, they need to holler at you. That's real. And, and my, my thing is just to stay away from all the... There you go with that cat again. Say hi to my partner, man. Yeah. Now, now I don't want to call the cat a kitten because of the they might complain about that. They complain about the baby mama title. But look, so my thing is Stay away from the drama as much as possible because some drama is unnecessary. Now, it may be necessary if this is your road dog or a family member and something foul went down, but sometimes it's, a lot of this stuff is unnecessary. And don't get me wrong, I don't put my places in unnecessary positions, but I've been fortunate enough not to re offend. What? You know what but how you know I got the cat? She over there sneaking, watching you. Make sure you don't say nothing. No, no, guess what? My wife's sister is watching the live right now, <laughs> and my wife on the phone with her, and she told her on the phone, tell Toon, put the cat down. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to sister-in-law, man. <laughs> yeah, man. But that's, you know, the term the term baby mama is not a derogatory term, homie. It's, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it is what it is. We're not together no more. We're not. We co-parenting. You my baby mother, I'm you know what I'm saying, and, and that's cool. She shouldn't be offended by that though. Right. Right. But um man, I, man, we could man, we could talk about a lot of stuff. I don't know how much time you got. Uh how much time do you have? Uh I'm off tomorrow, so you know I'm 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 in it, I'm in it to win it, homie. You know what I'm saying? You bring it, they bring it, they got questions, we can do it, homie. All right, let's go another 28 minutes, man. If, if y'all got questions in the comment section, whether it's for Tunes or me, go ahead and shoot. Oh, While yeah. We got Tunes here. Going to get the unadulterated, uncut, 100% grade A, USDA beef answer. <laughs> Did Avalon <laughs> feel the impact of Eastside Chocolate's death from the coast? Well, it wasn't no East Coast when Chocolate got killed. Right. Which uh, got killed in like 72. Yeah, a long time ago, homie. That was, you know, that was a long time ago. That was a long time ago, homie. Hey, they said, why you just throw the cat down like that? No, I'm just playing. I said that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I hate. That's my hey, that's my heart. You know, she sleep. We sleep three to a bed, homie. Me, my wife, and the cat every night. Every night. Where she if sleep? I by your feet? No, right up by my head or either on top of me. Damn. She'll really, she'll get rushly on my stomach <clears throat> and go to sleep because right there, if I'm laying on my side, she'll sleep on my side or she'll get up on the bed right like right there in front of my face. Mumpy be clowning me all the time because I be clowning Mump. Mump be going to get his feet done. I be like, man, no, no man go get their feet done. And he be like, well, you got a cat. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I'm man, like, I'm a, I'm a cat person, homie. Man, I got a lot of love and respect for your cousin, man. Old Mump, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he's a real character. These people don't really know how much of a character Mumpy really is, man. Right. And he got, but his philosophies are great. And his, 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 uh, I don't want to say leadership, but the way he laid the law down is, very commendable and respectable. He really thinks it out and knows how to present it in a right. way that you understand it and respect it. Man, let me ask you this, man. What you think about this uh this Russia and Ukraine get down? I've been I've been keeping up with it, except for the last few days. And um Putin got a lot of heart, but now I'm starting to look at Putin like, man, Putin is crazy. He he thinks too much of his army. Right. When he led him in Afghanistan, it failed. 
And now he led them up into Ukraine, and they was looking good for the first three or four days, and then they just been a stalemate. And did you see that uh, that American, that retired vet that went over there and helping Ukraine, making all them videos? He over there clowning. He tearing them Russians yo, up, man. Yo, uh, the phone is sounding like a robot again. Want me to go out and come back in? Yeah. All right. This cartoon, no insane from Foltrek Gangster. Ukraine has mercenaries. They're going to take out Putin. You see Biden threw that little slick comment in. Now Biden got him over there questioning, should they chip Putin or not chip Putin? That was a cold little setup. That was an alley-oop Biden threw him. Like, he don't need to be president no more. Uh, they want to know, what was the question? Do you know Insane from Fultre Gangster? Yeah, yeah. Do you know Lala from Six Deuce East Coast? Yeah. You did time with Lala? No, we wasn't on the yard. All right, all right. Yeah, I was an infantry, and if I didn't have kids, I would take my butt over to Ukraine too. That's what a lot of people starting to say, and we might be surprised when we find out how many Americans really are over there helping them. Do you think America and Russia are going to go to war behind Ukraine? I don't think so, but it, it's, it's obviously on the edge where it's very possible. Right, 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 because now what I'm looking at, okay, once, once they go through the Ukraine, whatever that next country is, is a NATO country, and that what they were saying something about the fighting is right there on the edge, but if Russia tries to go across that border, it's going to be on and popping. Yeah, Poland. But okay. ch check this out. This was, this was weird to me. They said that cat will help you sleep well. Uh, this was what was weird to me. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden goes over there and he talks to the 82nd Airborne. And then he goes and gives this speech. Say the what? No, huh? Okay, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, my bad. So the whole time, the American news is telling where Biden's at. They filming him in real time. And then Russia shoots that missile over there and blows up that oil spot right by Biden. And they like, oh, shit. But y'all giving Russia free intelligence. Y'all tell right. them Biden's over there and where, is he, where he's at. Of course, they gonna say they blew up the oil, so... Ukraine military can't get oil for their vehicles and stuff, but no, nah, man, they knew Biden me, was over there, man. They were sending a warning to Biden, like you better watch yourself, man. Let me, let me, let me shoot this scenario across your desk, and you tell me what you think. Yeah, let's just say if America and Russia were to declare war on each other, do you think that China would use that as a quick strike and come on in too? Uh, I think China would definitely engage on Russia's side, but North Korea is the one right. shooting oh, yeah. the missiles over in America right now. Right. I was going to ask you about that too, you, because now, if like oh, it would literally, okay, it would literally be Russia, China, and North Korea versus the world. But now, that's 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 an even Steven stand down, get down. You feel what I'm saying? When, yeah, ain't gonna be ain't gonna be nothing left. Because them is, like, I would like to say them are three crazy leaders, but really them are three leaders that's not taking no shit from America. Right, right, right. They stand down for their sovereignty. You know, I can't be mad at that, but Venezuela would probably aid Russia. You uh, think? They might, they might. Uh, a, few, a few of the smaller countries might aid on Russia's side, man. What do... They, um? I mean, do Venezuela got an army? Do they got some? I mean, they got some rebels. They, you know, they could do some guerrilla warfare. But that's what I was saying about Putin right. overestimating his army. Right. Like, in his mind, see, Russia's really cut off from Russia and North Korea are cut off from the rest of the world. So right. they're really behind in their military. But in their mind, oh, we ready. We got nuclear weapons. We, we got nukes. Because they know people, they know human beings are scared of nuclear war. And they like to use that to, to put fear in people. But at the same time, they think that their army is so great because they do have nukes. But America's military is top notch, man. 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Notch, bro. Uh, somebody said yeah. Pakistan might side with Russia as well. I think okay. Syria, Syria would would also want to be part of that too. That's true too. All right, now off the war topic, let me shoot this past you. It was a lot of uh, accusations flying back and forth that uh that Super Bowl was set up. What you think? It was rigged. <laughs> I'm trying to think. Oh, the Rams winning the Super Bowl. Right. I mean, no, I don't think it was rigged, but this is what I do have a problem with. They missed the call. They missed a, a no call, rather. And it allowed the – what was the team the Rams beat? Uh, uh, Buffalo? No, it was – uh, no, it wasn't Buffalo. It was uh, Cincinnati. Okay, the Bengals. So what happened was that when they missed that call and the Bengals got the touchdown, I feel like the league and the officials working that game felt like we got to make this right. Like we blew a call. We gave up an important touchdown in a, the biggest game of the year. A lot of money on this game. A lot of people watching this game. A lot of sponsorship on this game. And we need to make it right. And so I think on that last drive where the Rams scored to take the lead, I believe they was cheating to help the Rams score. Right. And and how officials that, how, will do that. How that affects the game depends where your bias lays. Because if they don't blow that call, then I believe they don't cheat for the Rams. And so the Rams are still ahead. Um, the outcome of that game, how it would have happened had they not made that bad call, I don't know. I don't know if the Rams would have won or lost, but I do feel feel like they just tried to make up for that bad call, man. See, uh, making up for it, we can see that. But what got crucial about it is is when they decided to do it. So you know, if you give up, if you let the if you if you let the other team score late, late in the game like that, and there's no time to get back, then you're really affecting that game real bad. Well, they they definitely affected the game without question, but. It's hard to say a game was fixed when there was a bad call on both sides of the, of the field. Right. Now, I have my own personal conspiracy. It's, it's kind of lunacy, but I feel like the league looks, or, or, or maybe not even the league, but this billion-dollar gambling industry every year, I believe, has some say-so in how the games are called and when these calls take place at a, a particular part of a game. And, you know, they they put in reviewing calls and put a time limit on it for a reason. That was to keep the game around three hours and not extend the game. Right. However, they're reviewing these calls, and it's going way past the time limit that they put in place. And that's when I think they're trying to figure out what is the money at on this game. Right, you know what I'm saying. They it's in their best interest to win, to win whichever side the money is is going to make these casinos rich. And let me throw this in there as part of why I think uh, the way I do about these conspiracies. I've been gambling on football on professional sports for a long time, over right. thirty years in casinos, and you used to couldn't have. Like the Maloof brothers owned the Palms Casino, but you couldn't bet on the Kings game because they had an interest in the Kings. And now it's so different. Now you have sports books like the MGM and William Hill that actually have investment in these pro games and these horse races. So why would they not cheat when it's their money on the damn line? Right, right. You know what I'm saying? You you shouldn't be able – that should be a conflict of interest. You shouldn't be able to let people wager on a game and you got money invested in the NFL, NHL, and uh, uh, auto racing and horse racing. It should be all bets off then. Right, right, right. So my conspiracy, man, I, I believe they're going after the money. I believe um, that too. You know, money money going to move money gonna move the crowd. Yeah, absolutely. And and I'm surprised the NBA NFL actually allows them to have a stake in, in their organization. Um, 
because they're a billion. NFL is a billion dollar industry too now. Right. So now you got two superpowers merging, and I mean, there's an invested interest in the NFL to let the sports books make the call on on a play, man. I'm just saying. But however it go, it's gonna go, man. Yeah. What the people out there talking about? Uh, a lot of people saying that I'm stating facts. I'm 100 percent right. Uh, my father grew up with the NBA player. He told my father to never bet on professional sport. And see, this is my thing about Keith Claus. I try to get some stuff out of Keith Claus, and I couldn't get nothing out of Keith Claus. I sort of tend to believe Keith Claus was just naive. Like he was not paying attention to the money and the politics in sport. Right. That's how I feel. Because Keith Claus came on here and said, he believes every NBA coach is honorable and, and a good coach. He said he don't believe there's a bad coach and a coach that would cheat. And that's just not truthful. Right. So I, I think bro, I think bro really was naive and didn't even pay attention to his you know, the career that he was in and, and the the inner dealings of the outcomes of games and the way coaches call games, man. Mm-hmm. Because it's been proven, it's been proven. There's been every NBA refs that have been caught cheating, and there's been there's been NBA coaches, NFL coaches, and baseball coaches that have been known to kind of ease up and lose on purpose. Right. It may not be proven that they're losing for money reasons, but it's been proven they're losing for draft pick reasons. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Yeah. So. Kev Mac, what it do? This Looney Rue. What up, Looney Rue? Four, five, six. That sound like Pomona to me. Yeah. Yeah, keep Cross a good dude, but that don't have nothing to do with Four, five, six. I, wonder, um, I wonder if he know. Uh, I wonder if he know his homeboy, Big Zane. He probably do. Keep Cross know every damn body, man. No, I'm talking about the dude, Looney Rue. Oh, Looney Rue. Looney yeah, Rue, a, you know Zane from Four, five, six. Yeah, I had a partner in the pen. We used to live waste together named Big Zane from over there. Ask Cartoon if he know Body Slam. Where's what, Body from Slam Avalon? from? From Avalon? I don't know. If he talk about Slam from Avalon, yeah. Well, they said Zane, rest in peace. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. Dang, sorry to hear that. Yeah. Uh, from yeah. Avalon. Yeah, he and, um, he and uh, Old Folsom right now. Man, that's one thing about look. Now I could never figure out, like when it would come across my phone when you going live with something, but I could never figure out how to like ask questions or like how people like ask questions on here. I could never figure it out. Well, first of all, you have to catch the video while it's actually live, right? And then second of all, you got to click on live chat, and then the comments will come up. Now you able to comment okay 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 and i just type it in ask cartoon do you know any bloods from cooper green oh shoot yeah out here in alabama yes <laughs> done did time with a whole lot of them. uh my boy uh my, my boy uh what's his name man um god dang man i just could have said his name and done forgot it already what he said, do I remember G Bill? From Fo Trey Gangster. Yeah, I remember that little short man. That little fool used to get on my nerves so goddamn bad. Look, I remember one time we go down there to their hood. This for the for the real problem started. And um, you know, it was in the stage of, you know, letting our little homeboys fight. They little homeboys. So man, I remember one time I took, I took like two, three of my little homies down there on 43rd Central. And they out there fighting. They out there fighting. So anyway, G. Bill and some more, more little homies, he's sitting in the car. He ain't no, he ain't no, but yay high to a little cricket. Uh, he said something. And I looked at the little boy. And so I look at Bertrain. I said, Bertrain, man, you, hey, hey, I look at the little youngster, man. He he can't know, he he can't know who he's talking to. But now you know, he uh 
he uh he was a little rider though. He was he was a little bitty dude, but he was a rider though. Troy Stevens said, "Give us a story about Rainbow from Broadway." Oh shoot! I mean, what they want? The, the most of the stories about Rainbow that I could give you was back when we was young, and they was always coming in the park, and we was fighting all the time. You know what I'm saying? This was like back in the day when um they figured they you know they was gonna make South Park there. And they was like, no, that's not gonna happen. It's Avalon Park. The homie, I mean, we, you know, it never it never went to gunplay or none, but it used to be fist fights every day, all the time. Hmm. <clears throat> all the time, homies getting down. Hey, shout out to the Compton neighborhoods, man. Um what was the mandatory exercise when you was in the crip program? <laughs> Shoot, you already know, homie, them burpees. Had to get them burpees. I had to, you know, I wanted to get into that, uh, to the thousand car, you know what I'm saying, where you could do a, a thousand six count. So, like, mm -hmm. when I was, when I used to be in the shoe program, because I used to get up, I used to get up early in the morning. I learned it, but now, oh, an old Jama, an old, an old BGF dude, we was in, I was in high power in the county jail. He was like two cells down from a dude named um Yo Two. I think Yo Two dead now, but oh he he was old, cuz. But the man would get up and do like 1500 six counts every morning. I mean, he was he was in his 60s or 70s at this time. And he would get up and do, and I, I used to check him out. I was like, man, this old man, he got discipline. He didn't have no mattress, no pillow, no nothing. The one time took all his stuff from him, and um he would sleep on like some newspapers cuz and like have a little thin a little thin piece of newspaper for a pillow you know i would ask him about it. he was like you know hey man <laughs> it is what it is you know i mean the man had discipline he had, he used to talk to me talk to me talk to me i remember the homies had to check me though they were like hey cuz you talking you talking to old boy a little bit too much now you know we don't do that i'm like you right you right so uh i stopped talking to him and um i remember i passed by one day going to the shower and i He's standing at the bars, and, and I look at him. He say, don't worry about it, young blood. I, he say, I understand. I know what's up. I just, you know, like kind of nodded my head and kept going, you know. But yeah. that man used to do, man, I'm talking about. So, I, you know, I used to try to do mine. The um, I think when I was in Pelican Bay shoe, I got up to like 900. I never hit 1,000, but I got up to like 900, though. I would get up at like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning and bust down. Roll my mattress. You know, you roll your mattress up. Discipline, homie. Roll your mattress up. Turn that TV off. Ain't going to be no laying down. Ain't going to be no TV, no none of that. Until after them burpees was dead, you eat, then you read, you study, and then at a certain time of day, you roll your mattress out. You can look at a little TV, then you go to sleep, and the process starts all over the next day. Was that a Blue Note program or a Crip program? That was because that was really basic. I, you could probably you can pretty much call it a crip program, um, but it was kind of like you know just a, a discipline program. You feel what I'm saying, homies back there? You know what I'm saying they they come up under that strict discipline, cause and it was just like you know what you would do. You know I would get up in the morning, cause you know what I'm saying I watch that watch you know watch, but <clears throat> I had a youngster to sell with me, <clears throat> and um. They put him in the cell, dude named Flashback from uh, Pasadena Raymond. Big youngster. He come in the cell. So now, you know, I've been in the shoe a whole year. You know, my discipline is what my discipline is because it's programmed as usual. Man, this boy here, man, he wanted to make noise, hop around, and oh, cuz, why you turn the TV on or turn the TV on? And I'm like, homie, it's, it's read time. It's study time right now. Homie. You know what I'm saying? He want to talk, cuz ain't no talking, cuz I'm finna bust down. I'm finna get my exercise in. So it got to the point where, man, I think I had to go to blows with the youngster to say, I'm like, cuz you tripping. So I would, you know, I would try to ignore him and, you know, you know, you know, just, but he took that for a weakness or something. To one day, I'm like, cuz, check this out. I'm, this is what I do, cuz if you don't like what I do, cuz you have to get out. If you don't want to get out, homie, I'm gonna hurt you up in this cell. So now he look at me like, what you talking about? Because you heard what I'm saying. I say, because you've been pushing the envelope for the last couple of weeks now. I'm not finna go with that because I don't like doing no damage to no another crib. But you're going to make me. Cause So now either you get with my program because or you get out because I've been in this cell a whole year. We ain't finna do this. The homie end up moving. 
you know what I'm saying? But, you know, we he left on good terms. But it was what it was. He was young, what number like 21, 22, had a lot of energy. He wanted, he wanted, he needed a celly that he could jump around and play and wrestle with. And that that just wasn't my demo, cuz. Man, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to go back and, and get a timer and a and a counter puncher and see who say cuz more, you or sag from Santana Block. Oh, I, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, what cuz say right there? You say who was Avalon's closest allies? Yes. Oh shoot, cuz uh at what time it like right now or back in the day or if he talk about back in the day, cuz it was the main streets. Really? Yeah, cuz us and main streets was joined at the hip. I didn't know that. Yeah, I knew yeah. y'all was cool, but I didn't know y'all was that close. Oh yeah, yeah, cuz us and the main streets, cuz then you could probably say us in the kitchens. It's yeah. always been it's always been Avalon Main Street Kitchen, cuz we always, for some reason, it was, you know what I'm saying. Um, but um, my favorite kitchen got to be Kitchen Mo, man. Cause I talked to Mo two days ago. Me and Mo was kicking. I told him when I come out there, um, we gonna kick it. But as of like right now, the homies, you know what I'm saying? They 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 still click tight with the kitchens real tough. Um, there ain't no like with us in the main streets. And you know it's still kind of cool. It's still kind of cool. But you know, man, it's, it's so crazy in the streets with the homies. Kind of leaning that for somehow, some way they kind of got like I say, got cool with the Hoovers. How that happened, I don't know. It kind of like you know, kind of in the main streets, kind of like got real cool with the in hoods. It kind of like, okay, well, homie, we see y'all, but we're gonna leave y'all over there. Man, my favorite kitchen is my boy Kev from 87. Um, shout out to Porky and 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 um, Smokey, man, them them two cool dudes too. Man. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. They, they uh, yeah. <laughs> you got some, you have some good homies from Kitchen. What 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 allies did you have that drifted away and became y'all's enemy? Oh shoot, the full trace. Do you know any Avalons from 116th? I know all of them. <laughs> sure. I'm, I'm from the A gang. Uh, I know him. I I travel up and down Avalon when I be on the streets like like it like it's a uh, like it's a speedway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, it was so fun back in the day, cuz we used to we used to run the light from we used to run the light through Swanhood from like about 79th all the way to Manchester. We run the, we had to run all the lights, you know. They done messed Avalon up. Now they made Avalon a two-lane highway when back in the day, you know, it was a four-lane. Mm. So now, you know, it's a little bit different. But back in the day, oh, Cub, man, we used to run that light. They used to try to catch it, though. They try to dump, you know, dump on it if, if they knew the homie car. You know, my car got lit up so much, Cub, I, I stopped even taking the bullet holes out. I just left them in there, Bobby. <laughs> they know what it is. <laughs> uh, they keep asking who do – the Avalons go to go into the module with? Um, you know what, cuz? I don't really know. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, you know, they nine times out of ten, cuz they're gonna put us with the gangster car. You know what I'm saying? Um, even though, you know, like I say, you know, Avalons, you know, Avalons come up under the gangster banner, but like I say, we don't say moving, we say swinging. And you know, the homies, they we really don't get along with the majority of the of the people that's in the gangster car. But um, in the in the county jail, cause I, you know, I, I don't, I don't really, I, cause I ain't been to LA County Jail since the early nineties, mid nineties. But um, if I'm th um thinking, cause yeah, wherever all the gangsters go, Avalon's gonna go too. Hey, uh, Gu mentioned a couple times. Did you know Mo, who stayed on Avalon? He had a big family and coached basketball at South Park. Mo. You probably know, was too busy game banging. Yeah, yeah, probably because I know a few moles though. Oh, did you ever play basketball? Where on the street? Yeah, South Park. Man, I wasn't because stop it, man. I can't I was no you was too busy game banging. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about no sports cuz none of that on the street. I was thinking about putting in work. I mean, that's how my mind worked back then, you know, cuz when I pull up. I'm I'm sitting up there, cub. Me and the homeboy, Crazy Ray, cub. We trying to figure out, you know, who what indie hanging out that we might can catch or something, you know. 
Absolutely. So the, the, the census says sag say cuz more, but then somebody said it's a tie. I I I think you said cuz an awful lot. Sag seemed like he said more because he talks slower and he stretches the cuz out. Right. He got cuz, cuz, and you just say it and keep going so it don't really stand out. Yeah, hey, look, hey, my wife, my wife, cuz she she when I get uh, if I like, if I you know, I drank that, I drank that eight ball, cause I don't, re I don't drink nothing else but that eight ball, and um, you know, two eight balls, cause I'm, you know, I'm in there like swimwear, I'm faded. So my wife, she know when I'm faded, cause I cuz her to death. You know, I'm not gonna call my wife cuz unless I'm high, or well, unless I'm drunk. You know what I'm saying? And um, she'd be like, oh, you must have done drunk some, cause you cuz me. I'd be having to watch it. She'd be like, boy, don't be cuz me. I'll knock you out. I'd be like, all right, baby, I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. You know. You know, she she ain't nothing but this big, but she run the show, you know. <laughs> I don't really say cuz a lot, but when I drink, I notice I say it over and over. It's repetitive. You know what it is though? See, cuz when you drink, your inhibitions leave away and you and, and you resort back to you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying to cuz who you who you are, who you was once was. You feel what I'm saying? You go back to when you was younger and it was an everyday word now. You know, like I say, cuz I'm so tired of hearing fools talk about what's up, bro, 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 cut. Man, I hate that word. They don't call me no guy. Man, you know, that's just me, homie. No, nah, oh, everything is bro this, bro that, bro this, bro that. I'm like, dang, when did that start? So we might be in the hood when I be coming back to LA and the homies be like, oh, bro, I'll be like, yeah, okay, cuz. You know, yeah, bro. I'm kidding about no bro. <laughs> I hate that word. Now I see why mom used to call you crazy. <laughs> bro, they, they bro you to death nowadays. Man. Well, shit, I'm going to go, man. We gave him 90 minutes, bro. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <girl>. Okay, <laughs> All right, Crip. Exactly. Good, good having you on, man. Stay in touch because I want to I wanna come see you. Especially when you go see Mo, man. Okay, okay. Uh, when I come in, you know, I already told Mo, cause when I come in, I'm gonna get in contact with him. We gonna kick it. But like the next, like the next time you hear from me, cause nine times out of ten, I'm gonna be in Texas. I ain't gonna be in Alabama no more. I'm gonna be all the way in Texas then. But now it ain't nothing but a hop, skip, and a jump. I'm still coming back to South Central every chance I get. As long as you got you know. the same number. So. Oh yeah, I yeah, gotta, yeah, yeah. I gotta make sure C Mac don't beat you up. Because then you and Mo might trip on the neighborhoods when I hang out with y'all, man. No, cuz no. Hey, look, hey, when I was talking, I was talking to Mubby about three days ago. He was with uh Babu from 9-0. Mm. They was at uh they was at a uh uh what you call them things after the after the funeral. The repass. Yeah, they was at a repass. I was kicking with him. I was telling him, I say, Mump, now look, cuz when I come out there, you know, we're gonna be kicking, we're gonna be kicking it. Keep keep the wolves at bay. <laughs> right, right, right. He was like, he was like, man, stop acting crazy, cause you know it's all right. But yeah. um, man, look, see back, man, listen, homie, I'm gonna film it. If if I if I get that fool to get down, oh, you know, you already know, cause I'm gonna film it, and I'll be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He think he famous. He finna show up, get famous. It gonna be on the uh C Mac from Five Five neighborhood get knocked out by old man from Five Trey Avalon. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. It's going down. <laughs> Hey, you take it easy, bro. Bro, I'm out of here. All right, cub, man. Hit me up. All right. Yeah, for sure. All right, Mac is and Maniacs. That's it for cartoon. Five travel on guest crip. Uh, 90 something minutes, man. That's about 33 minutes. See, I had to do the 33 for the Avalons, right? But I, for the five trays. But I gotta go. Have fun with y'all. Goob, go live, Goob. I'm going to come hang out with you, Goob. Go live, Goob. Let's turn your show up tonight, man. Thanks for the super chats. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for running the numbers up. I'll have Cartoon come back again. Y'all like him so much, you know what I'm saying? But I'm going to try to get him in L.A. with Mumpy, Sparks, maybe a Rockhead, maybe a Bam from Front Hood, uh, Kitchen Mo. Oh, now, now. Now you want to come in, man. I'm going to have to call your cousin back on, man. <laughs> Mumpy, what's up, He's back on here. Mumpy. I'm closing the phone, man. 
Manny, my cousin Tony back on that show. Hey, Tony. man. <laughs> what you eating, man? Hey, Mac video. What you eating? Yeah. Hey. You can't, you can't with... hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Man, what's up with your cousin, man? He want to fight C-Mac, man. What's going on? What? I do not pay my cousin no mind, man. I just All seen right. that where you said he was going to be on there. Yeah, <laughs> but we've been on for an hour and 30 minutes, man. Okay, I was in there. I was in there sitting there with my wife, man. Okay, that's what's up. At least I know you wasn't watching the Dallas Cowboys. I wasn't watching Dallas Cowboys. Man, you see the Lakers tonight? Oh, bums. Truly. Man, I told I told my crowd one time, you could not talk bad about the Lakers, the Dodgers, or the Cowboys in the pen with Mumpy. Boy, you better be ready for a good fight. Um, how you been, man? Man, I hate right. the Lakers. What's up, hate Tony? How you doing, cousin? What's up, old man? What you doing, fool? <laughs> <laughs> What's up? How are you all right? I yeah, I didn't get to hear your interview. I, I just said you was going on one. You know you go on one. No, no, you know me and look, man. Me and Cam, we don't condone no foolishness. When you get on this platform, you gonna conduct yourself like a young man, like a gentleman, or you getting up off of that. I concur. Yeah, man, you sit up there look like Santa Claus about the beard. God dang, huh? what's up? <laughs> hey, hey, look, hey, I was look. You see me, don't you? I got this from uh, who 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 got this in the family? I don't know. I, that's trip, cause I'm tripping oh, on that. I'm oh, just telling my, my wife. Uncle Jay. I don't know who's on my mama's side. Right. I was just telling my wife earlier. I, I said I want mine to um hurry up and turn all the way white. You know what I'm saying? They got a uh, you know, they got a club. They got a, they got a crew, a club, a group that you can join. You know, older dudes with with the all white beard hook up. I want to get into that. You know, women be saying, you know, that make you look real distinguished and all that when it's all white. Worry about what your wife think, man. <laughs> oh, I know her. I know her. I know her. I know her. <laughs> she say she want it all white, too. All right. All right. All right. Hey, Y'all know, okay, you know, know the world is not looking at me right now, Artie. Yeah, what you thought this was private? Yeah, you sit up there like you in a hospital bed or something. No, I'm gonna kick him back. What you eat? Some of us got to work some saltine crackers. You know what we used to eat in prison? Saltine yeah. crackers. I you didn't like saltine. Them. No, they was nasty because I, I like the rich crackers. I mean, I used to try to I wait till I get them in the package. Hey Mump, you ever hey. ran across cartoon in prison? Yeah. <laughs> Where at? Tell him, hey, tell them what happened. Tell them what happened, homie. <laughs> Okay, so here's the story. So a dude came over to my to my cell, right? And he told me, say, Mup, man, it's a dude on the yard talking about he your cousin. I said, he my cousin? He said, yeah, they said they call him Big Man or something. I think that's the name they said at that time. No, they said Cartoon. They said I was cartoon. in mm -hmm. I'm like, man, I ain't got no cousin named Cartoon. Like, who is he saying? Big? So he's describing him, right? It's a big old dude, man, buff, man. Got the long braid on his uh, beard. Yeah. So, like, like, let me get up and go see who this is. And I so when I walked up to the cell, right, because we was in Solidad, the lights was off. So I'm looking through the window trying to see, man, who in here, man? Man, who in here, man? I'm looking for somebody. And he could, he cut his lights on and bust all up to the door. Like, <laughs> Like that, like that. And that was my first time seeing him since I've been gone, though. Like my cousin that turned into a beast. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, look. Hey, I look, I sneak out. Cause I want to get out. I want to come out, get out on the yard with the homie. So the dude, I'm you know, I'm on CTQ or something for about 10 days or whatever. But now I switch, I switch with the dude who was in the cell with me, and I get out. So you know, me and Cub, me and Mutt, we walk as a couple of the, we walking the track, we talking, but now they find out I done snuck out the cell. So they calling me, calling me. So I'm telling Cuz, I'm like, look, homie, I ain't going back in, man. Bump that. I ain't going back in. 
So when they 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 lock the yard down, y'all recall they lock it down. I'm the last one coming it's in. Lyric brother. So when I come in, they take me to the little room and a sergeant and a couple of other police talking crazy. You heard us calling you and whoop 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 whoop. So um, I'm like yeah, all right. All right. So the goddamn um, the sergeant he poked me in my chest, man, because I didn't come in. Man, come on, homie. You know what I'm saying? Don't do that. What you do that for? Up top, I go. Next thing I know, I'm over in Solid Ass Central and X Wing. I'm like, oh well. <laughs> I catch up with Monk when I catch up with him. Hey, 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 Kev Mac. You you do know that he owes his career to me, right? What? Explain that, man, because I know Cartoon wants to be from 60. Hey, 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 no, no, he didn't want to. No. Man, hey, Cam. I I ain't going to even lie, cuz. I owe my career to our big cousin, Walter. For real. What about me? Man, what about you? (laughs) I thought you told me that. You used when I used to come on, come over to the house with my bandanas. No, no, because you kept trying to get me to come over there with y'all, and that wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> no, you was a West Sider. <laughs> you know, you know how relations was between the East and the West. No, homie, nothing but that East side with me. Mom, you used to go over there with your bandana hanging. <clears throat> yeah. Why not? Yeah. How old was you? 16, 17? Yeah, I was with, I was, hey, listen, Kev. You got to remember, I, I didn't, didn't come up in this era right here, man. You know, this is a different era. Tell them, what, back in that era, wherever you went, that rag was hanging. Yeah. And besides, where I'm at, that's where I'm from anyway. <laughs> I already know, man. I, huh? I, I know, I know, Ma. I was born in them. Yeah. You know, you, you, that's where I'm at, man. That's where I'm from right now. You ain't going to cross me like that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he was, uh, he had, uh, he had, um, who, who was that was with you the other day, cuz, uh, Mad Ronnie? Mad? Yeah, man, old Mad. Man, that boy sure don't look the same, man. Me, I, we were just talking about Hulk from 11 Trey Block, how swole he was and how he looked now. Cause that's how man when we was in White Cub, man, Ronnie was on swole. Yeah. That fool look that fool look like a, a McDonald's straw now. <laughs> man don't work out, man drink a little bit. Yeah. Or a lot of bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. So 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 what was you talking about earlier, Tom? Oh, cuz we went, we went, we went from A to Z, homie. We, you know, mostly like if the the comments, but now I was telling um, I was telling Kev Mac, I want to put these paws. And, and Crip Mac Jones, you know, oh Why boy, because he, he been real disrespectful to me, homie. You know, he real disrespectful because I, 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 I get at him with the olive branch through Instagram. You know what I'm saying? Let him know, cause I respect your Crip and homie. You know what I'm saying? You throw back. I like that. You're a youngster, but you throw back with that thing, and I like that. Oh, he called me an old custer and uh, this, that, that, and this, this, and that, and you know, I'm like, dang, homie, cause you know you. You coming at me like that? All right, cuz, don't trip, you know. Both our sets in the 50s, I'll be out there in May. You know what I'm saying? Cuz I come to them so-called alleys you talk about, cuz. We can, we, you know what I'm saying? We can freak it in Korean. I don't give a damn. I think I think your cousin and his feelings, Muffy. Me too. <laughs> yeah. That's family. He hurt yeah. my feelings, mate. Yeah. Ma- you know? Ma- say, I don't know what type of dudes y'all are, but I work with feelings. Right, we human. Yeah, feelings human. and emotions are a human Normal. trait. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. So you know, I don't, you know, I don't want to kill him or do no stupid mess like that. I just want to, you know, you know, give him, give him, give him one, two uppercut jab and be done with it. I'm feeling some type of way, right? And he would get at my family like that. Yeah, he talk real bad to me, homie. You know. Hurt my little feelings, man. I, I thought I was being a cool cat, man. He hurt my little feelings, homie. I was about to say, pick your cat up, man. It's going to be all right. Oh, look. Hey, hey, look. Hey, hey, Mump. Hey, Mump. Yeah. Hey, Mump. You want to see your partner? That's why he talked to you like that. <laughs> no. He, you got he a talk kid. To you. 
No, he'll talk to you like that, cuz, because you get your toes done. <laughs> Dude got a cat, man. That's my partner, cuz. I love him. Hey, when you coming out here? In May. In May? Yeah. Oh, okay. You see her, cuz? Yeah, I see her. What's her name? Kitty. Kitty? No, T I T T Y. T I T T Y. It's like kitty cuz it's separate with a T. Titty. Like titty tat. You got it? He put his thing on mute. Yeah. Yeah, man. Monk, you uh yeah, I'll see you soon, Monk. I'm surprised you got my text message, man. Yeah, I just had happened to see that, man. And I said, let me see what they're talking about. I told him, uh, me, you, and Sparks gonna go to the casino. Yeah, I'm trying be, to roll with y'all, man. I be getting mine. Hey, when um, did uh, did uh, did Babu ever calm down? Did you tell him I said what's up? Hey, it was. Oh, it it went, it went up he like calmed that. down, but he was like, I don't know what he was on. Right, he was hey, tripping, Mom. huh? Mump, I never asked you this, but I got one question for you. Did CCO or Blue Notes ever try to recruit you? Or BGF? I don't know. You know, no, not them. No, not, not the alphabets, not the last three alphabets for sure. You know, I don't know why. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you a story. This is a real story. So we was in uh we was in we was in Folsom, right? And this was like in the uh I think this is the, the early part of the 80s, like the early part of the 80s. So you know how you had that little contingency to be to the side? Mm -hmm. They not they they not about nothing. Only thing they're concerned about, like if it's a conversation, wasn't about cripping, then they don't want to have it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, we'll be on the yard with them dudes. And so what happened, I can't remember who exactly was. You know Ray Ray? You know Ray Ray Toon? From where? He's from the east side. You talk about a uh, player Ray Ray had all that money. I can't. I don't know anything about no. He was in. He was in Folsom. He was in Folsom with me. But I know that he. I'm trying. I think he was. A, I think he was a CCO. Because he tried. You know, he he was supposed to try to set me and little Bam up. You know, little Bam from A. Trey Hoover. No. I know of him. I don't know him personally. Yeah. Okay. He was. He was. He was, he was supposed to be trying to set me a little bam up. But what happened was, they had came to me and told me because I used to be like, "Look, bro, I'm not with none of that. You know, this is this is what it is." And so their position with me was this: Look, can we get you a building? Right? You can run the building. You know, yada yada. I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want no building. I don't want no building. You know what? I used to always wonder about that too, cause how you, cause I've never heard of you being a part of any of that. But I used to always wonder how did you get around that, especially with you coming to the system so early. And that's the, I think that's what it was, cause when I was in there, right? But but I'm, you gotta remember, I was like naive, so the only thing I know is the homies. Okay. And to, and to do anything other than that, it's almost like, okay, well then, I'm I'm like turning my back on that. And I just couldn't see, I'm saying me, I couldn't see myself doing that. Right. Because remember Big Sasquatch? Wasn't he from Compton? Grape uh, Street. Sasquatch from Grape Street or Schoolyard? Sasquatch Yard. was from Grape. From Grape Street or Schoolyard? No, he wasn't from Schoolyard. So he was the one from, from Grape. Grape. Yeah. Yeah, like, because he had got at me one day about that. My squash, I ain't trying to hear that, man. <laughs> Uh, 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 Big Bobo from Bible. Hey, now guess what? Me and him fell if, out behind that. Listen, mm -hmm. if if I wouldn't have left Soledad on the yard with you when I did, what's that? That's you got come to be home. insane. That's come home. <laughs> you got to be insane. <laughs> <laughs> Never. Say <laughs> <laughs> what's gonna happen? No. <laughs> did you ever oh, run? 
plus motor mouse in the pen, Mark? Yep. Y'all was on the same yard, huh? Yeah, but mouse, you know, but mouse, mouse was never really trying to let homies do that. That was his position. I keep hearing that same story. Yeah, that was his position. That's good. They didn't, a lot of people didn't like a scar, man, for some reason. I don't know. He came uh -huh. to um he came to Pelican Bay right before our parole. He hit the yard. It was a lot of mixed feelings about that. Yeah. It was. Yeah, it was a it was um uh well yeah. Yeah, I and heard then, a lot of stories. And then he kind of had like the best of both worlds too. I mean, well, like I'm I, saying, like, because he had the umbrella of that, and then he had the umbrella of the homies. So he was kind of like he had the best of both worlds. Well, yeah, 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 cause yeah, cause when he when he hit the yard, antennas went up, and it was it, it was a faction that was like all speed ahead, but it was like no, nah, -uh, stop, don't yeah. sit down. Hey, Mark, they want to know if you still play the piano. I don't play the piano no more. You know how to play the piano? I Man, you know how to play the piano. You know Grandma taught me how to play the piano. I didn't know that. You didn't know that, Tony? Hey, man, don't play with me, homie. <laughs> All right. <laughs> don't call you Tony. <laughs> don't don't play with me, Michael. I got a picture, man. This is in the car, man. I'm going to show up. Hey, Kev, I'm going to see you this picture of me and him when we was kids. <laughs> you can post it. You think like we was, but we was like little kids, like twelve. Yeah. I'm gonna make it the thumbnail on this right here. We had plaid pants on and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> with, hey, with the bell bottoms. <laughs> yeah, we was at Grandma's house. Yeah, hey, 90, right there on ninety second. Yeah, hey, you been with Grandma? You try to comb my hair with a fork. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I was probably on the east side, not on the west side. Yeah, on the east side, side and watch. Yeah. 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 Hey, look, if we would have grew up with our grandmother, right today, all of us would be from Bebop Watch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know much about them. Ah, right, well, you know, hey, yeah, you was gone when in, in the inception of them, you was gone. Were they factors? Uh, they weren't. They no, not to me. You know what I'm saying. They they little old hood. They they over there. You know what I'm saying. They nothing but a but a, another branch off from the nine deuce bishops. Okay. They over there though. They nine deuce nine tray now, but they over there. Kev, okay, you going to the funeral? Yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask you, but I want to stay in my place. I don't. Want no, I, to... I don't know when. The, I don't know when it is. I know where it's at. I, I'll hit you up. Uh, I who, know where who, who's funeral, Mark? Oh, my homeboy, Fat Donnie. You oh. know whose funeral is after Donnie's, right? Who? Moody's mother? Mom. Moody's mother. Yeah, I know about Moody's mother funeral. You know, I got to be there for that. Yeah. Man, listen. We had a, uh, in 87, we were selling, we, 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 we were slinging over there in Harlem Hood on 39th and Western at the, at the Palm View Motel. And um, the room we was in, I guess y'all had the room before we did, because in the closet, it was hit up. It was hit up in the closet, and it had a roll call, arrest in peace. Now, at first, I'm thinking it's a roll call of all y'all homies. But at the bottom, it had the RIP. I was like, God dang. Kev Mac. You yeah. remember Kev Mac? No. You remember that's the one you be asking about. That's him. Uh -huh. How you doing? <laughs> that's Tony. That's your, that's your nephew. My nephew. That's Liz's brother. That's not my nephew. That is your nephew. How is he my nephew? That's her cousin. Oh, it's your cousin. Yeah. In -law. I'm talking about nephew. She I'm not old you. enough to be my auntie, cuz. <laughs> that's your cousin. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> that's your cousin. That's Liz. That's Liz's brother. Big you heard from you heard, baby boy. Yes. You heard from Lyric. <laughs> I man, her. I ain't talked to Lig, man. And you know, Lig, don't talk to Lig that much. Yeah, you know, she done got so bougie and so, you know what I'm saying, so funny style. No, she not. She just herself. Herself? <laughs> she accomplished but, a lot. She's just different. 
Man, listen, <laughs> that that ex hood. Look, she done got that police job and married that police fool. She thinks she's some. I remember when the little heifer was a car hop. Homies pulling up at the house. She jumping in and out the cars. She ain't nothing but a little old ex East Side hood rat who made it good. I like Larry. You, my brothers talk about me like that. Do they? Yeah. Is it is it a foundation up under? No. Oh, okay. No, she ain't never. She she never she never banged or nothing. She from Fruit Town, though. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> she from Compton, Fruit Town. She she say her brother started Fruit Town. Tell her. Hey. Kev is the historian. My brother Ronald, Kev Mack. Listen Ronald, to it, Kev. Ronald Burks and Kenny Moore started Fruit Town. They right. started because of street names. Right. Don't you, you heard? Have you ever heard that, Kev? Yeah, absolutely. See, I told you, I'm not lying. Okay. I say you was lying. <laughs> it had nothing to do with game banging when they started at Fruit Town. For real? Yeah, all, hey, the, they, streets, all the streets was named after fruits. Yeah, cherry, Love. cherry, plum, peach, pear, plum, peach, uh, fig. Yeah. yeah. Kev Mack. Yeah, right. cherry. Yeah. You know where she met me, Kev? When? She came and met me in the 60s. That's right. How'd she get so lucky? She came, she came to the hood. <laughs> I was in the hood. <laughs> she wasn't messing with me, though, but she met me in the hood. She, she was met messing with me. I was gangbanging, so she wouldn't mess with me. Mm -hmm. It was up. You know what she asked about you, Tony? What she asked? Is that the, is that the, remember, remember when we was at the funeral? Yeah. Is that the same one you married? Yeah. Yeah, see the same one. <laughs> the crazy. Hey, she said she was looking at her when she was when you was talking to her. Man, hey, look, she's so man, my wife's so jealous. You know, she's from the set, so you know, she she kind of got a little fool up in her, but she's so goddamn jealous, cuz man, she think, man, I don't know what be wrong with her, homie. Like when the phone, like when the phone ring, I ain't gonna even lie, homie. I talk to everybody on the loudspeaker. I don't even talk. I don't even hold regular phone calls because she want to hear who who on the phone and what's being said. Man, that hell for crazy is a messy bug. See, you can't feed that. You feed it now. Man, I'm just keeping the peace, cuz what they say: happy wife, happy life. Yeah, thousands of people are seeing you. They see you already. She talking about she don't want to see it. Kev, you already been out there. Yeah, 406 people, people already seen you. Yeah, 406,000 people already seen you. They just how seen many? How many? She don't want to. She don't want to be seen no more. All right. She, hey, don't man. I ain't tripping. I ain't gonna put it on. She don't. Hey. She Tell don't I need no, that fruit town history. She don't want to have no. Yeah, you know, and they know you from the fruit now, so they looking for hey. you. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey! Tell her her homeboys like to got a hold of me one day out there. <laughs> oh. The fruit town, cuz I got caught up, I got caught up in the house going to pick some sherm up, and boy, it was the wrong, it was the wrong thing to do. Hey. What street was that? Wait, no, she said what street you was on. No, who are that's Rick James, little home girl. Hey, the street, homie, I can't, I think it was uh I'm not really sure, cuz I messed with a girl, I messed with a little female from A Train Hoover, cuz she told me she asked me to ride out there with her. So I ride out to Compton with her. Her auntie stayed in Fruit Town Hood. So when we go up in the house, it wasn't nobody on the street. After about a couple of hours, uh, when it was time to leave, cause the street filled up. Now I got on some painter pants, cause with two blue rags. The blue rags sold on them, so ain't no tucking them, cause they sold on. Them. And them fools was all up and down the street, cause so I tell old girl, I'm like, hey, man, hey, I, you know I'm supposed to get up out of here. What's happening? So it was like. Baby, I don't know. So uh, I tell her, look, go start the car. So when she goes start the car, they trying to talk to her. So she got a fly mouth, homie. So her auntie going to tell me, go out there and get her. I'm like, man, bro, you tripping like I'm not going. They going to kill me. You go out there and get her. They ain't going to do a slap you. I didn't go. I, I stayed there all night. <laughs> not not the big tune. Not, not the straight Not the big bang. tune. Cause I didn't have my heat with me, homie. If I'd have had that heat, line pusher. man, I, yeah, I pushed the line. I, I, I pushed the line on that door when it clicked, it clapped and got locked. 
I wasn't going out there because about 40 of them out there. I mean, too much. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Yes, I could. Hey, look, I could do some amazing things because I could. I could handle all that. It was just, it was a little hot on the yard for me. Didn't you? Oh my God! If you don't stop it, hey, look, hey. the phone, the phone messing up. Cause I'm finna, I'm finna jump up out of here. I'm finna go in here I know, and get on the team. But look, hey, look, hey, remember what we were talking about on the? Remember what me and you were talking about about three weeks ago on the phone? Yeah, yeah. Well, my, I'm talking about my, my cousin. Remember we were talking about oh. when I would tell you how people be entertaining when somebody come tell them something about somebody? I can, oh, hold on. I'm finna click out and click back in because the phone messing up. Stay there, cuz. I'm Get coming your right iPhone. Back. You don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Mom, you you hilarious, man. No, I, I, made it, I, I made some things for you, man. Oh, the videos? Yeah, for the little things, but yeah, we're going we to, I, I, I meant to see you the little thing about, yeah, with, uh, oh, when I tell you, when I see the thing with the little ants and how they scatter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a good topic, man. What was you, what was you saying now? About, you know, you know how, you know how when somebody, cut, like somebody, like when you get this one, hey, Tune, I want to ask you something. Hey, man, uh, you know, some dudes told me, right? Right. But. He ain't not one time asked him, well, did you tell Toon? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Did, did you tell Toon? Yeah. Because if you didn't tell Toon, why are you, why are you telling me? Right. So I need to clear the air with that to help people understand why that's not cool. For the dudes who hear that and then go tell somebody else. It's like, hey, homie, when you was telling me about that, it's like you said before. Like like how you told him. Um, oh, yeah. If, yeah, if you ain't willing... If you ain't willing to take it to them, don't bring it to me. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. Who wants to hear that? Cause my, cause my motto is, if I say it once, I can say it twice to whoever it's about. Cause whoever, man, I wish, man, come on, you let how, how another man gonna make you bite your tongue? Gonna make you uh suck your words back in your mouth? Ain't that a blip? Cause you might well go sit down and pee. Oh, they doing that. No. Yeah. Hey, I I get that a lot. I tell him, you know the homies number, call him. One of my G homies was talking shit about me, and Big Rick called me and said, hey, Kim, man, the homie talking shit about you, I told him to call you. I said, yeah, tell the homie to call him. I love Big Rick for that. Rick man. always tell him that. Big Rick always tell people that. I love that. But I tell people all the time, call the homie. You got his number. Why you calling they, me? They're not going to do that. Listen, listen. No. They're not going to do that because they don't want to deal with the wrath that comes with that. Right. See, that's the whole thing. In other words, it's, it's almost like, it's almost like, say if you was hanging out, let's say like me and Kev, right? This, not to exclude you two because I don't know where y'all was hanging out at. Right, but right. Like just say if me and Kev, how we was, say we hanging out on the dime, Kev, right? Mm -hmm. And if things going on on the dime, and then four or five years later, a dude might go mention something to another dude about something on the dime. Well, nigga, was you on it? Did you say something then when it was going on? Because <laughs> if you didn't say nothing then, why aren't you saying something now? See, that's the that's the issue right there. If you didn't say something then when you was there, then why are you saying something now when we're away from it? Right, right. Like, what is that about? Like who does that, and then who entertains it? Yeah. Like, like which one is worse? Cause, but now the cold part about it, man that that type of mentality right there, cause is so prevalent. You got you got more of that mentality in the hood now than you do, like your type of thinking. So it, it, it it's like it's like hard to get around on. Yeah, but you got to remember, people only know what they know, right? So that's why you have to always try to plant the seed and, and, and put it out there so that they can then cultivate it and then it, you know. You see what I'm saying? Because they only know what they know. That's like I said, I don't I don't I don't fault nobody like in my neighborhood how they are today, because they only know what they know. Like that's what they was taught. So that's what they're doing. So I ain't mad at them. But however, at the same time, I can still kind of like educate you on some on a few things. Right, and now what you choose after that—that's on you. Then I could be mad. 
It's not like you didn't have another option. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking about. I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go to the 99 cent store and start and buy me one of them rubber erasers and carry it around in my pocket. And do what with it? When they start, when people start talking, just pull the eraser out. <laughs> <laughs> Pull it out. <laughs> Erase them. <laughs> you gonna read? Cause you gonna redraw? No, I mean we're not. No, I erase erase them. Them. Like, you know. like they irre- what they talking about is irrelevant. Just yeah, forget about right. it. Yeah, no, I'm saying I'm clowning. Like you know, I'm just saying like if you erase them, cause you gonna you gonna redraw them and how they supposed to be. <laughs> yeah, we gonna hey, we gonna blow. Remember in school how you blow the little rubbery stuff that left on the paper and scoot it off. <laughs> Nigga, get up out of here with that shit. Hey, Mark, can you give us one Herman Moncrief story? No, I cannot, Kev. I'm not in that mindset right now. You send me saltine crackers. Hey, hey Mumpy, that, that was from one of my viewers, bro. I wouldn't Oh, for the viewer? Yeah. They want to hear about Mr. Cricket? Yes. Okay. I told you when, when, next, when, next, when, when y'all be on here? I tell you, I come on anytime. You keep thinking no, it's every No, but you do Wednesday. a regular time, though. I thought it was Wednesdays. No, nah, it's anytime, Mom. And then I give you, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you Herman. I'm gonna give you a Herman. I'm gonna give you a Ricky. I'm gonna give you a Pie Face. I'm gonna give you a Big Fee. Let me ask you this: Who, who else I want to give? Uh, Let me ask you this: Do Mumble? Do, you got a Mumble star? A Mumbles. That's five. All right. I'm gonna hold you to that. Cool. And then I'm gonna give then I'm gonna give one of my pooches, aka little mom. Le- hey, hey, let That's me ask you this. That's six. Do you did you approve of Lyric talking to Crip Cow? I never knew that. Oh yeah. I never knew that till you just said that. Oh, okay, yeah. So that means Cow wouldn't tell me that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, he never no. told me that. He probably didn't. He probably didn't know you was related to her. She probably told him. Nah, I, 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 be, I bet he didn't know you were related to her. Yeah, cause they still trip when they find out me and you cousins. Pro, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we not street cousins. I tell no, we like, you know, we we blood cousins. We related. Right, right. We got that blue stuff running through our veins. You know, we come from the lineage. We got a lineage from, from the from our grandpa, grandma, grandfather, grand. You know, we got a lineage of us. Right, right, right. That's real. I remember. Look, she asked me about it. She before she started talking to Cud, she was like, "Is it all right if I start talking to such and such?" Now you know me. At the time, I'm like, "No, no," because you know I didn't want to talk to no gang bangers. Period. <clears throat> She wasn't stumbling. I was talking about she went through with it anyway. But you was beefing anyway. You had your beef. What? With the homies. I wasn't tripping like that, cuz. Ain't nothing wrong with it. No, I'm I'm saying I I wasn't tripping. Listen. Listen, listen, I probably would have been there that night. I had to pick sides with the family. Like, nigga, I ain't ain't going down. When? The skate ring. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Because they. I mean, you know what? I would have respected it more, cause if they would have just gave me a chance to fight, cause I didn't even get a chance to fight. Well, you that's how we get out, though. God dang. That's that's the homies, man. You know how it is. Then look me about it anyway. They said that wasn't even your beef, man. No, what? It was that, cause all, all that disrespecting was going on. Yes, it was. was. That was toward that was toward that was not toward the, the five that was toward the gangsters. No, look, they started out, they thought they thought I was from Hoover. I wasn't from Hoover. Then they say, Well, dang, I thought I was from schoolyard. It wasn't from schoolyard. So now they try to figure out well, where's cuz from? Because I'm giving it up. But now they tripping. But now when I throw the tray up, it was like, oh, it don't make no difference. It's universal. And then it went, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> So when I like I say when I go to turn around, bam! <laughs> I don't remember nothing else. Now when I come through, the homies put me in the car, 
But now they woofing. So we leave. But like I say, a couple of days later, you know, I get Big U on the phone. I tell her, I'm like, huh. All I want is old boy who hit me, which, you know, he was like, no, nah, cuz, you know, we, 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 we don't give our homies up like that. We don't throw our homies up under the bus. And I could, I could, I could understand it because I wouldn't have did it. So I'm like, OK, well, cuz you, you, you know what time it is. He was like, OK, whatever then. Let, 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 you know, let the chips fall where they may. <laughs> What year was that, Tom? That was 80. That was either 87 or 88. I think it was 88. Yeah, that's yeah. Old, yeah, cause, cause mama told me about it. I didn't even know mama told me. But see, at, but now I, when I got out the hospital, I still didn't know because the last thing on my mind, I'm thinking the 40 avenues because they was the last ones I seen they was getting into it with the police. But so when we go in their hood, they was like, no, cuz that wasn't us. It was the six O's. Like, uh-huh. Oh, okay. So that's when I go to the homegirl. Like I tell you, you know, the homegirl, she had a, you know, she got the baby by Kincaid. She the one call you. And you know, I'm trying to boo boo boo. He was like, no. But now I found out years later, cuz it was uh your homeboy Schlep Rock. Ooh. That was Slip. Big yeah. Slip had squabbles. <laughs> Year, years later, years later. Damn. Big Slip Rock, rest in peace, man. Uh -huh. oh, he, oh, for real? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. I seen Cuz one day sitting, he was sitting on a, some stairs, I think on 10th Ave. Oh, it was some white apartments where the stairs come down, I think. And um, cuz we got a homegirl named Rajanette. She was from y'all hood at first. But um, this was 80, I think, cuz 84, 85. We opened up a dope spot in y'all hood on, on Fifth Ave or one of them is a red brick, it's a red brick apartments or some red brick buildings. And um the homies had the spot for, for about two weeks. Then y'all found out that we was in there. They was like, oh, no, y'all got to come on up out of there. We like, no, cuz, man, we ain't going nowhere. So um, my homeboy, Boo, had knocked the little bro, Nettie. Nettie, she was going with uh with Loco Coop at the time. So, But now he knocked her from cuz. So she started coming to the hood all the time. And, you know, we of course, you know, we had to get up out of there. That's that's another story. It, it took me holes in the building. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we had to go. But um we with her, we with her, me and the homie boo in the car with her one day, cuz, and um she drive over there. So look, I'm in the back seat going crazy. I'm like, man, where you going? Oh, we going um, I'm so when I'm seeing where she, I'm like, cuz, I'm like, boo, man, tell your girl, cuz, man, don't 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 bring us over here. She tripping. Oh, you gonna be all right and whoop, 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 whoop. Man, I'm ready to mule kick this whole clean out the car through the through the through the seats. Don't take me over here. Man, she pulled right up over there and old boy walked up on the car with the talking to her. I'm like, man, I'm in the cup. Look, man, I'm in, I ain't gonna even lie. I'm in the back, man. I'm in the back seat shaking like a snitch at a gangster party. <laughs> we end up leaving. I told her, I say, look, Nettie, don't do that no more. Don't, no, never do that no more. You tripping. What you drinking? What is that? I can't see it. Casamigos. What's that, that alcohol? Man, you know I don't fool with that mess. That's, that's the devil's water. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Hey, Tune, I remember y'all had that spot. And the, the it was two things that I remember. I remember once I was down there on Fifth Ave and they was talking about, you know, where the, where the Avalon is at. You and remember, huh? Was that was yeah, Fifth Ave, huh? Yeah. But look, yeah, it was Fifth. But look, I seen one of y'all hit up all over the sidewalk. Uh -huh. Avalon all over on the sidewalk. I said, oh, they marking territory. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's always dangerous. Yeah, man. Listen, 
it was dangerous once y'all found out we was in there. Yeah. It was going to be dangerous. Yeah. But now, you know, it make it worse when you go to right because when we had the spot in Harlem Hood, that's what they was mad about. Homies writing all, all over the side with the buildings and all that. But now, <clears throat> y'all did give us a chance. Y'all asked us nicely, you, you know, please, please vacate your premises. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's like, nah, it's too much money over here. Man, when the goddamn bullet stopped, it was like, okay, y'all can have it back. We gone. <laughs> God dang. <clears throat> well, I'm going to go, Monk. Me too. I told you, I don't know when I'm coming to Alabama, man. What you coming out here for? I ain't never been to Alabama. You come out here and start some mess, you know you, you, you start trouble wherever you go. Never. <laughs> no, I know, homie. Hey, you welcome, cuz, anytime, anytime. Like I say, if you don't come soon, homie, you know I'm finna, I'm finna relocate to Texas. Are so you, you know we'll be, we'll be going up out of here. But uh, what part of Texas you looking at? San Antonio. Okay, that's where Keith at. No, Keith and um, and, um, Keith is in uh, Fort Worth. Oh uh, yeah, Fort Worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, when you come to LA, man, I want to hook up with y'all, man. Hang out with y'all. Oh yeah, yeah, man. We go, we go, man. We gonna get our gamble on at that casino, man. I'm, yeah. and I'm, I'm, and I'm, 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 I am adamant about Monk taking me, so I, you know, I'm play me some Texas Hold'em, and you know what I'm saying. Now you paying for it, ain't you? Yeah. I'm talking about you gonna cover my gambling and all that. Okay. okay. All right. Damn, Monk, you got it like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mump. All now, right. Yeah, uh, Mump, man, Mump Rich. No. I got it. What kind of car are you driving right now? A bucket. I got a little bucket, man. Cuz, what happened to the bins? I drive Prius. What, what man, where, where the bins I are? That. You so. Hey, Kev, you see how he do? He get out of prison. Y'all homies, see, that's one thing I like about the six O's. Y'all take care of y'all riders. Man, he got out, y'all bought it. You bought that man a Benz, cuz, and now he done got rid of it. Hmm. You know how much maintenance is on them type of cars? And it's short. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right, homie. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Registration. That's yeah, that's true. Mom say he jumped in a Prius. He ain't trying to spend no money on gas. Yeah, they killing us on gas, huh? Man, the gas price is off the chain, cuz. Even out here, they getting high. How much y'all gas? Uh, you know what, homie? I, it's y'all, okay. I'm feeling the three dollars, man. We paying five fifty, six dollars. No, we down there six dollars, man. And I ain't even in California. No, California, like dang, there's seven dollars now. It's it's gonna get there. No, I seen I seen um on YouTube what's the book uh, Shuler King, the, he showed where uh it was like six fifty five seven o seven o eight and seven twenty gas cause cause like gas out here now it was like like two ninety three dollars now yeah. it's like in the late threes early fours. Mm -hmm. Oh y'all got it good. Okay, well let me know when we back, man. I'm coming. All okay. right, for sure. I'm going to get you up because they want them stories. And they said you should throw a baby face story in there, too. Uh, I, I got Carlos. All right. All right, Carlos. Hey, hey, Kevin, we got right, to think about somebody we never really trip off of. There's some cats that cats don't know about, man. Yeah. But they know about it, but other people probably used to never know about it. Right. Whatever happened, Um, I used to hear his name a lot back in the day. Y'all homeboy uh, named Scatterbrain. Oh, you know rest in peace. Yeah. Oh. Okay, but let me clear. Let me clear something though. But but you do the original scatterbrain. The original. I knew he was gonna say that. Is doe eye. Doe eye. Yeah. Oh. That's his, that was his that. original name. Yeah. Okay. The one I used to hear about was like back in the early eighties. Yeah. That's the yeah. That's the homie though. That was mm. the homie. Rest in peace. Scatter. What, what about another name I used to hear over there? I used to like a lot. Cause was uh let loose. He oh, rest yeah, in we, peace too. They, they, he, they, they, he, got, he got he got uh he went home the same day I came home. Man, I was over Mumpy House. He was at my house when he got killed. Yeah. 
Dang. Matter of fact, I was speaking about the helicopter, and it yeah. was him. Yeah, because he was on his way over there too. Yeah, on his way to the house. The same day I came home, he got killed. Yeah. Oh man. On the way. To, on his way to the house. I, I said, "Mom, boy, you see how it is out here." He's finna man? come see me, man. He never got to see me. Man, I'm not finna ask about no more bodies. <laughs> man, that's that's how rough it is. I'm telling you, I seen that, that I seen that rest in peace roll call in the closet your homies had hit up. And I was like, man, God dang, man, man, what? And this was in the 80s. Hey, Monk, yeah. did you know Jay Blade? Yeah. They found Jay Blade in the backyard buried. Yeah. Yeah, they buried him. Yeah. Wasn't that little, uh, like the little Snoop, a tiny Snoop brother? I don't know. Yeah. Don't know. His brother went crazy. The neighbors killed him and buried him in the backyard. Yeah. Oh, the neighbors? I heard it was his girl and her mama. But I thought they were the neighbors, like they lived next door or something. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's, from my understanding, I could be mistaken. But yeah. Hey, but when you get ready to come back, let me know, Kev. And, um, All right, let's go on Wednesday. Okay. They said, what's up with your partner, Petey What? Oh, he all right. I talked to him uh, two days ago. Rodney Glaze is doing fine. All right, well, next time you talk to him, tell him I said, what's up, man? All right. So let's do it Wednesday, Ma. I'll be in touch. All right. All right. Good looking, loved one. Take it easy. All right, y'all, that's it. Cartoon and Mumpy, and hopefully Mumpy comes back Wednesday and delivers. And y'all have a good night, man. Rest in peace, L.A. Lakers, though. Peace, y'all. Peace, peace, peace.